Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Seems good. Okay, uh, let's continue, shall we? Now that we've fixed the supply chain for the probes, uh, we should be almost there to Astro and Energy Science Tier 4. Um, we've got... That's right, I was about to... I was about to tidy up these uh, wires a little bit. Um, come to think of it, do we really need a pylon to do that? I think we can reach this up here. And then this doesn't reach. Okay. Uh, I could reach it across this. Is that bad? I don't think that... Um, I don't think that output signal is going to affect anything. On the circuit that we're using uh, for the LTN train stop input, I don't think it's going to do anything with negative 5 anchor using spaceship left clamp. Hey, Whiskers. Hi, Nuka. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, so that's all connected. That's all connected. I don't mind this too much. And let's do the same thing on the opposite side. Jump across this um, wire connection that we have not found any purpose for so far. Um, we need some bots here. We urgently need some bots here. What? No, we've got logistic bots. I, oh, I thought we made these purple chests. We didn't. Okay. Uh, we're probably going to receive a few excess probes. Perhaps. Um, I just want to double check. Yeah, the, uh, the robot network here is self-contained if we were to build a block next to it. Okay. Um, this thing I think is already fully automated, providing media defense installation ammo to our space outposts. Um, but I do need to build a receiver station for it, not to mention the actual media defense installations. Um, let's put some of those in here. Installation. Uh, let's just make sure we've got more than we need. And ammo. Um, say 30 stacks. Do we have... I don't think we have ammo in this block. I'm surprised I didn't update it to have ammo yet. Uh, let's make that like a thousand. Do I need to take the outposter for any reason right now, or is it okay if I just go with this thing? We've got clamps, we've got media defense installation ammo. I don't have the solar panels with me. Hey, Veldak. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, let's go for uh, a chest full of solar panels. A chest full of accumulators. I don't know. If this thing only ever goes to space, I don't know if we'll be needing them. But I'd rather just put them in there and not find out later that I do need some. Considering the uh, extreme power consumption for such a 
for such a short amount of time uh, from the superchargers, for example, uh, it might make a bit of sense to just have at least a few accumulators, even in space. Uh, can I... Make this line up. Oh, we did it. Except I don't think... Oh, there it is. Cool. Uh, can we do that a little bit smarter? Cool. Um, so we should be receiving... Uh, these probes as soon as we've got enough star probes to trigger a delivery but that's, that is quite a few probes I think I would like to trigger the first delivery early just to make sure it's working uh, so let's say um, I want to just quickly put an unconditional condition on this uh, let's say if some random signal equals zero. Away you go. Fantastic. Solar probe rocket number one is away. It's heading for Calidus orbit. Uh, anchor target is five. And... This one is five. Okay, cool. And then... Oh, these are not set correctly. I haven't actually made a... It's going to be negative four. I haven't actually made a rocket yet. To pick this stuff up. Or a spaceship, rather. Um, have we done that... Oops. Have we done that over... Here? I don't think we've got a spaceship for picking up the results from the asteroid belt either. Um, we want to use this ship design again, which I think I blueprinted. No, I didn't. I didn't save this properly yet. Um, so let's go with this. Um, and I'm just going to call it uh, Ion Shuttle. Seems good. And we want... Well, I could build them here, but the space constructotrons don't have the resources at hand. So I'm going to build it here. And have it move over here. Did you complete all research? Uh, no, we've got quite a lot more research to go. Um, or do, if you mean, did I complete the stuff that I've queued up for now, then yes. I don't think there's a whole lot we can do uh, until we get tier 4 of something, unless we want to do some more zone scanning. Oh, is that tier 3? We could go more artillery shell range, I guess. The thing is, we're kind of past using artillery shells now. I wonder what temperature this goes to. Probably the maximum? Energy 4 is looking very attractive. 
Okay. Um, a little zone discovery wouldn't hurt, I guess. And back to Nervous Orbit. Uh, so we want to configure this with negative uh, four, I think it was. Negative four, negative four, and well, if it's negative one, two, three, four, this will be picking up the uh, star probe data. And I don't have to put an amount just yet. Green leaf. What? The icons sort of work backwards from what I would expect. Uh, coal. It's very far away. Lots of biters. Very tiny moon. Not interested in that. Uh, Umbra, Uranium, I don't think we're struggling with Uranium, uh, it's pretty far away, Rel uh, pretty average radius, hardly any biters, there's a mysterious structure, if we want to visit all of those we'll go there one day. Regulus Asteroid Belt, I don't think I even need to look at that to be honest. Um, so this will be looking for star probe data, 2400 per chest. This is actually way more than a train would carry. Um, I'll almost certainly get the first delivery to happen. Uh, manually, instead of waiting for this to fill up. But let's launch this to Nervous Orbit. Oh, what did we find? Keras. Keras. Uh, Vidamelange, not too worried about that. Big ish radius, hardly any biters. Uh, not that far away, not too exciting. Chroma. Very small. Wait, that's really small. That might be our new smallest moon. Uh, uranium again, hardly any threat. Kind of far away to bother with. How big is our Tullaby? 905. It's still the reigning champion for smallest moon. And just when I'm playing, if I don't see the research bar moving and feel like I'm wasting time, uh, it's fine. We've got time. Uh, unless. Oh, what was this? Uh, New Moon Magera. Oil, quite small, kind of far away. Not too excited about that. And one more. Let's get you to launch. Oh, I forgot to give it the name. The Snipe. Uh, anchor to Nervous Orbit. Over here, please. And... I need to update this one. Okay, so... Asteroid belt, that's not right. We need this to be star probe data. And we need this to be star 315 is our destination. Uh, we're reading from the ship. And 
sending to the console. Oh, and away it goes because it's empty. Fantastic. Uh, as for the asteroid belt one... Oh, I need to name it before it runs away from us. Uh, star road about uh, one. Fantastic. Back to now for orbit. Once more. Oh, I did. I made I made some blueprints of these, but. I just didn't put them in here yet. Just have to wait for them to put the floor in. What kind of planet slash moon are you looking for? Um, if it's big enough, easily accessible enough, and has a resource that we're relatively light on, uh, then I would like to exploit it. Um, like if we found, if we somehow found a cold planet that was right here, um, and had, I should remember this one is here. If we ever get short on iridium, this is quite close. Uh, if we had, like, a coal planet here that had no biters and decent radius, um, preferably mid-range radius, actually, so that the spaceships can easily take off, but we still got a, a good amount of stuff. Um, but yeah. Uh, easy and bountiful access to an infinite flow of resources. Uh a resource that we're currently bottlenecking on would be ideal. I could do some targeted um, zone discovery. Uh, I think you need to go into the informatron to set that. We're currently on coal because that's the main thing we've been bottlenecking on lately. Targeted zone discovery. If, I think if another seven of these doesn't find something close, uh, like closer and more easily exploitable than what we're already tapping, then uh, we need not worry about that anymore. Okay. Um, so this one is going to be Asteroid Belt Probe Data. I like the uh, probe rocket stuff for the tier four science. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice change from you know just building another block or depending on the shape of your base, another section of a main bus base. Uh, so this is going to be negative two. for high or what kind of uh sorry yeah, i answered that uh what are we did i set all of these already yes good uh and this is going to be asteroid belt road data one and begin Go to Nalvis orbit, anchor to Nalvis orbit, right about here please, and it looks like we already set up this logic, I guess so, negative two, negative two, seems good, uh, 
I didn't double check that the pipe was connected, but it should be. C. Veldak, indeed. Um, so where are we going? Calidus Asteroid Belt 1. Fantastic. Now we just have to build... Oh, we've already built the drop-off and pick-up stations for those. Uh, no, I already built this! Oh. <laughs> well, now we've got two. It, it's fine. It, it's, it's fine. This will queue up... Uh, th this will fill up and leave and go back to Nalvis orbit, and the next one will immediately replace it, and it'll be filling up while that one's emptying. Look, we're just we're just preparing for the end game when we crank the throughput to maximum. It's fine. Nothing, nothing bad just happened. In fact, I meant to do that. That's why I'm making one more shuttle. Uh, to get the data from the sun, it, it's, I, it's all calculated. I meant to do all of that. I would never build another starship or interplanetary ship uh, just to satisfy my OCD so that there's two of each. Um, shuttle. That would never happen. It's not happening right before your eyes. It's fine. Didn't I call it Ion Shuttle? Something something Ion Shuttle? Asteroid Belt Probe Data 1, Star Probe Data 1. Okay, Solar Probe Rocket 1? Wait, do I already have two of... You're kidding. Oh, no, 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 Probe Rocket is delivering. Okay. Star Probe Data 1. Asteroid Belt Probe Data 1. And this should be... Asteroid Belt Probe... Well, the second one should be number 2. Um, and let's stick with the naming convention. Star Probe Data 1. And I, I'll just double check, I didn't already make one. No, nope, we're good. So this will be... Star Probe Data 2. Integrity check. Star Probe Data... Fantastic. Um... Yeah, I'm actually... Uh, it's negative four, isn't it? I'm pretty confident this is all correct, so you can just go straight to the star. Caledus Orbit. Away you go. Fantastic. Uh, what have we got? What was the last one I looked at? I think it was uh, Mag Mag area. Mythulu. Why can't I type here? Uh, probably because I had the console up. Mythulu. Uh, Cryonite might be become relevant at some point. Uh, medium size, kind of far. Well, a it's not that far for Interstellar. We've got Cryonite here. Radius is almost 4,000, and we haven't been exploiting it much yet. Uh, and 
the demand for Cryonite doesn't seem that high. So this might carry us through the entire game. Um, what's next? But we'll bear that one in mind. Uh, Regina? Coal? That's what I'm looking for. Is that as close as I think it is? 22,400... Uh, 24,304. Uh, Parent Vosanus. Oh, you're kidding. The exact scenario that I was just talking about is happening. 3% bite a threat. Coal... Uh, uh, coal core fragments. It's literally the closest star that we've got. Oh, this changes the game. Um, the radius is quite big, so we're going to need... It's not waterless, is it? I think it is. Waterless. Does... Hmm. Waterless means there's no... Uh... Waterless means there's no oil as well, I'm pretty sure. So I can't build infrastructure on the planet to refuel the ships so that they can take off if they land here. I think what we would have to do is build something in orbit around the planet. Use delivery cannons. Or cargo rockets, but that would be even more of a pain. Use delivery cannons to deliver stuff from Regina to Regina orbit. And then have the spaceships pick up from orbit. Which is going to mean a lot less uh, liquid rocket fuel that we need to replace back on Nalvis as well. Um, unless we were to... This is also waterless. It doesn't look waterless, but it is. I was going to say, uh, we could... We could get oil from Ketopa. And, uh, uh, like, use delivery cannons to send oil, uh, liquid ro Do we have barrels for liquid rocket fuel that we can send by cannon? Let's see. Barrel. Crude, heavy, light, lubricant, petroleum, sulfuric sulfuric acid and water so even fluids you can only send like pretty much the basics i kind of understand not being able to put barrels of liquid rocket fuel in a cannon shell and firing it but still i'm surprised it's limited to just this okay so what was the name of that planet Vozanus? Uh, I'm definitely Regina. Oh, it's right here. I'll, I'll put that as like a high priority to colonize. So that means a lot less ion. Uh, and if we can fix, if we can set this up, uh, a lot less liquid rocket fuel to get our coal. Vazanos Regina, indeed. And it's an interesting, different logistical challenge. Instead of copying, copy-pasting what we've got already. Um, because we literally can't land our starships on here. Unless we get antimatter, and then it's just like a cheat. Um, it's probably pretty trivial to land and take off from any planet with antimatter engines. 
Um, but yeah, first thing, I'll have to set up solar, uh, energy beaming, and begin the process of removing the biters. Um, oh, there is oil. Wait, I thought I looked at a waterless planet and found no oil before. I think I saw oil in the list on Regina. Yeah, here it is. Uh, crude oil, what do you know? I thought you couldn't get it on waterless planets. Okay, I'm going to stop the scanning for now. And delete surface. But we're going to set up the energy beaming. Autoglave Regina, once we scan it and find enough biters. Um, what's next on the list? M... Pusa? Is also coal. It's a bit further away. I think it's further away than what we're already getting. Threat 0%, small moon though. Waterless. There's a little bit of oil. Um, solar 103%. Not too excited about this one. Um, parent is Maelstrom. But where is that? Uh, the Maelstrom parent isn't a star, right? Oh, that's relatively close. We'd probably go to Picard, uh, Picard if we need more cryonite. What's the fastest way to find exactly where this is? Empusa. Um... Oh, here we go. Oriel Orbit. Oriel. It's, it's this far away, and it's just a tiny little moon. Um... I don't think that's worth the effort. I mean, it would... The cost for the ships to take off would be pretty trivial. But... I, I don't think it's worth the trouble. Um, for that throughput. Uh, next is... Zegul. Coal again. That's right, we're doing focus, aren't we? Threat 100%. Relatively big. Um, parent is Team Magus. Distance is kind of far. I don't think I want to bother with that one. And then we've got Adikia. Which is in Basilia, it's kind of far, moderate size, not too excited about that one. Albion. Uh, kind of far, small, not too exciting. Kara. Kind of small, bunch of biters, waterless, kind of far. And last but possibly least, Arcasius. Uh, kind of far, very, very small. I think this is the smallest moon we've found. Five hundred and fifty four radius. That's actually minuscule. We could probably uh, scan the whole thing in a minute or two just by 
moving the navigation satellite around. Yep, there's the edge. This is like, uh, what's that rock in Kerbal Space Program that's so small that it's like hard for your Kerbal to move around on it? And that's it. That's the whole moon. The smallest of moons. Alacrity. How far is this? Oh, I think I was just looking at this. No, this is copper. Ragus. It's a little bit far away. It's more than a little bit far away. Okay, let's uh, delete surface. Alright, well we found one very interesting candidate, uh, which is all you can really ask for. Um, do I want to take... Let's look at our checklist of what I need to build. We need, uh, I should have a signal transmitter and these little things in my inventory. Signal transmitter, yep, I think we're good. Uh, roboport, chests, etc. I need clamps, we've got clamps. I need delivery cannon, I'm, I keep calling them delivery cannons, media defense installations. And we may need more solar, which we've got. Scaffolding. That's what I haven't put in this ship yet. Uh, I don't feel like waiting for the scaffolding to catch up, to be honest. Because I haven't requested it over here. So I think I'll just jump into the outposter. And our destination is the asteroid belt. Uh, I thought it would be easier to just scroll to it. Here we go, Calidus asteroid belt 1, away we go. Fantastic. Should take about 10 minutes or so. I still need to recall my Via Terra ships. I'm just sitting there. Ooh. We're actually bottlenecking on... Not the belts, it looks like the machines are going a bit slower than I thought they would. Oh, these are tier 3 modules. Yeah, these blocks only need to be half full when we use the tier 6s. Most of these machines are active all of the time now, that's great. Is there a reason that this side is saturated and this side is not? So the red wire should be going to the left. Uh, speak of the devil. I think it was just timing, I guess? Why are there 500 in here, and this one goes up to like 300 and then gets empty? This is very weird. We've got a symmetrical setup here. Hmm. 
unless a belt is broken or something. Doesn't look like it. That's weird. Okay, so I think the, the main thing we're bottlenecked on still is probably plastic or coal. Plastic because coal. Um, but the fact that we've got holmium cable constantly getting produced is very encouraging to say the least. Um, I don't suppose we've got coal appearing in storage? Oh, this is the second time I've checked here, and there's no coal in these chests, but it just finished emptying to go back into the rail network. Okay, well, we seem to be keeping up then. Uh, once I do this outpost, well, once I finish the outpost in the asteroid belt, uh, which is... It's gonna... It, it might need some more solar power. Okay, at this rate, it absolutely doesn't, but this machine is idle right now. 36 megawatts? Oh. We... need more solar immediately. Um, let's go with this. Actually, that's gonna block the engine. And we'll need a bunch of solar to support the Meteor Defense Installation Array that we need to build here. Let's build them down... I want, like... I think I'll use the scaffold. No, I'll build it over here. Why not? Because I want all of this to be one roboport just in case something does get damaged somehow. Uh... Okay, I think we're going to have to spaghetti this a little bit. Media defense installation number one. Number two. Number three. Number six. I could move this over, like, two tiles, perhaps? I can't. Okay. How about this? Uh, so that puts us up to 13. I might just... 14, 15... 16. That should be overkill. But we have 18 at the other outpost, and I want to be consistent with that. And we should just need a very small uh, station here in order to supply it. Uh, something like this, actually. Hmm. Well, that'll get the... I could build it here. That'll get the robots to reach their destination. Yeah, why not? Let's just clear the rocks, actually. And we will be needing a... Um, signal transmitter. And for once, uh, I actually will be copying these settings. Except that this uh, signal here is going to change. 
but the transmitter itself is going to stay the same. Uh, so we're going to put it here, I think. And transmitter can go right about here. Uh, we don't actually need that RoboPort there. That's interesting. The picker dollies has a specific key so that you can rotate these like this. Um, but I can't use it while this is a ghost. No big deal. So, how much solar power do we need? Um... Each of these is consuming... Well, how many do we have? 18. We're going to go for 18. 90 megawatts idle. And this thing is using... Uh, 36 megawatts. Call it 40... Plus... 19... Let's make 60 megawatts of solar panels here. 1.4. We need 43. We've currently got... Oh. Oh, this includes the spaceship. Uh, 75. This is actually already going to be enough. 90, not 19. Uh, did I misspeak? Because I'm pretty sure I meant 90... 90 megawatts. Oh. Yeah, no, I think I did miscalculate. Okay, so 90 megawatts plus, say, 40. Um, divided by 1.4, we need 92, 93 flat solar panels, which feels a it, it, it feels more about what I would expect, just sort of eyeballing it, just kind of uh, having visceral expectations from previous builds. Okay, minus four. This is 103. Fantastic. And that should be all it takes. We need some inserters, actually. And some power poles over here. Okay. And by power poles, I mean a, sing a single pylon substation. I love these things. Cool. Uh, so there should be very little to do once we actually get there, which we have already done. Let's build here. The radar construction pylon should get most of this done for us, if not all of it. Uh, what's the signal for the asteroid belt? Um, three, asteroid belt 324. Asteroid belt 324. And if we're less than 500 uh, media defense installation ammo, which we are, we want... Is it on the... I think it's on the red wire, actually. Because we're using the green wire for other things. Yep. 
so red wire goes here, and that should, uh, whoops, 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 that should, if I'm not mistaken, not make our ship take off, what's happening? Uh, Echo Laguna, thank you for the follow, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Oh, indeed. Um, so what's happening here? Media defense installation ammo resupply. Uh, input signals. Oh, this thing is just checking if we've got at least a chunk of ammo in this thing. Um, so it is passing everything through, we're just not receiving a signal yet. Auto save. Media defense installation ammo resupply. Oh, we don't have power. That's probably why. Okay, I'm going to remove this until we've built the rest of our solar panels, which apparently are not enough. Oh, it's because they're charging. How much power does it take to recharge one of these things? I can just spam more solar power. 20 megawatts when recharging. Yes, but how much does it take to recharge it? How many joules? Yeah, the trouble right now is it's recharging, so instead of uh, 90 megawatts, it's consuming uh, 10 times that, I think. Hundred and twenty megawatts. Wait, did I misread this back here? Sitting idle. Our sitting idle, our media defense installations are only consuming ninety megawatts. And if and it's Oh, I think they're consuming as much as they can. Yeah. Okay, in that case, more solar panels, please. Uh, Bilbo, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And all of the panels. We need apparently 384 megawatts. Um at peak here. If we set up energy beaming, I think we're getting... maybe not about the same energy, but it, it, it loses uh, transmission efficiency the further it has to go. Kenium is at 49%, and this is... Asteroid Belt is... Solar, 172%. Solar, 21%. So I guess... I don't know. Um, Pentium Orbit, 104%. So I think if we're in space, it's more efficient to just build solar panels. Okay. Uh, let's drop a storage chest so that bots can go somewhere. And I would prefer it if we don't need to dip into... Uh, using the scaffolding here, since we've got quite a lot of land to work with. We're getting there. I think some accumulators would probably make sense.
Yeah, I think this is probably enough. Twenty megawatt when recharging, so uh eighteen of these. We're looking at three hundred and sixty megawatts. So it doesn't reflect if there's not enough power, this doesn't reflect how thirsty it actually is. We are only forty percent charged. Wait, why are these because they were built first. Okay, so half of them are actually like 75%. And I think once they are fully charged, we're pr we've probably got an energy surplus. So we should... This should be enough already. Um, I'll change this back to everything, and I think once the signal transmitter has full power, um, we should see our resupply ship, uh, take off. I'd kind of like to... Why are there no logistic bots here? Okay, hold on. Hold on a minute. Logistic bots, 50. Oh, because we set this up to put the logistic bots in... We, we, we set... I think we're reading this based on available logistic bots. Um... How can I... How can I set up LTN to keep 50 logistic bots in here? Oh, pretty easily, actually. We're going to read from this chest. We're going to be sad that this just barely can't reach. Um... What are you doing here? We're going to piggyback on this inserter, which is going to have no condition. And instead of reading available logistic bots, we're just going to read what's in the chest to determine whether we need more logistic bots. Or construction bots for that matter. I guess. Okay. So there should be a train scheduled to deliver robots uh, here quite soon. I think. Could this actually just be blacklist uh, media defense installation ammo so we can have a stack filter inserter? Yes, it could. Blacklist. And I'm not sure why... I'm not sure why we don't have a train scheduled already. Apparently it thinks we've got 47 construction bots already. Reading from the logistic network contents. Oh, they're in here. Okay. That makes sense. Um, but I don't know why we're not getting a delivery for logistic bots.
No room for Logi Pots? Oh, we've got room. Um, but before we find out if we have a problem with room, there should be a train scheduled to come here even if, even if other things are broken. So we have negative 200 logistic parts. This is connected properly. This is reading from the chest. And this is reading the logistic network content. Um, I think we actually don't want to read logistic network contents in this instance. For... Bots, repair packs, roboports, and media defense installation ammo. Why don't we just read from the chests instead? Do you have a goal in this game? Uh, yeah, unlock everything. Play with all of the things in space exploration. Um, and then... Ooh. Teleportation? Unlocks other teleportation technology. This technology does nothing on its own. Okay. Arco link storage. Container linked by extra dimensional space to other containers. Wait, does that mean I don't get to teleport? Sad. The links of the container depend on the surface it's first placed on. Very interesting. Uh, but yeah, there are some wind conditions. Um, but mostly I just want to play with everything this mod has to offer. The true end game, indeed. Why do we have no bots being delivered here? We've got 2,000 of each type of bot available for pickup. Uh, maybe we've just already got two trains coming in here at the moment. And this limit should be higher. I don't care if we occasionally get a few trains queuing up. So that should give us a yellow light here quite soon. Oh. Oh, timing. Perfect. Uh, 200 bots, 200 bots. Okay, it's working. Good. Um... So I was thinking about, could we get a multi-request? I mean, we definitely can. Uh, we've, we've designed this before, actually. Um, over on Morpheus. Back when we were using cargo rockets to go way too far, and they crashed all the time. Um, I haven't figured out a better way than this. But, well, we only need to do it this way if we strictly need to have different request thresholds for all the different resources. Um, but I think, I think these items are similar enough um, in terms of scale. I would happily just have a few hundred of each. So we're going to set it so that... We'll read from the logistic network. Oh, we don't have solar panels here. Let's go pick them up. I don't think we strictly need the rest of them, but it's fine. Why are the logistic bots not bringing me solar panels? Oh, that's why. Fantastic. How did I get scaffolding? I must have been carrying that for a while. Okay. 
let's build these solar panels. And that should be more than sufficient. And then I want... I want to read from the robot network. We could include available bots or total bots, total bots, total logistic bots. Total, con total construction bots and logistic network contents. Um, I need a power pole actually. Tell me everything that we've got here. Oh, that's a lot of stuff. Um, because the spaceship is here. Yeah, that's definitely gonna mess things up. Um, so I need to isolate specific signals. If I want to check for things other than ammo to trigger a delivery. So I think we would need a combinator for each type of bot, pair pack, and ammo. I don't feel like doing that, I'll just rely on our spaceship to come here often enough. Less than 500. We do have less than 500. Media, defense, installation, ammo. I mean, installation, ammo, resupply. We are transmitting 324 asteroid belt and spaceship launch signal. Um, okay, so everything. Oh, it is working. I just forgot to put this back on. Oh, I didn't make sure we had logistic bots. But that should all be working anyway. Is there such a tutorial? Oh yeah, there is a tutorial built into the game these days. Uh, trains are not that hard. There's a little bit of a learning curve, but basically they're not allowed to occupy... You can't have two trains occupying a sector at the same time. Um, the chain signals tell the train that it's not allowed to stop in this block unless it's stopping to go to a train station. Um, signals allow a train to go in one direction in particular. If you want the train to be able to go the other way as well, you need a signal on both sides. And something that I only figured out this playthrough that actually simplifies things a great deal uh, is, as I said, uh, trains will stop in a block that has chain signals if it's to stop at a train station. So this doesn't actually need to be a rail signal. This could be a chain signal, which means the only place we use regular signals as opposed to chain signals is when we want a train to be able to stop in the next block. So this, this signal right here means that the train is allowed to stop here and everywhere else you should use a chain signal. The way I used to describe it is you should spam chain signals for intersections and then once you go out of the intersection you have a rail signal. Uh, but I think a better way to look at it uh, that keeps it simple as well is just put chain signals everywhere and then when you have specific places that you think it's okay for a train to stop and potentially block other trains uh, you can then put a rail signal there. All I know is chain signal out. 
Um, I think all you really need to know... Where's a relatively simple example? Nowhere. Uh, all you really need to know is break up... Use signals to break this up into as many sectors as makes sense. If this entire roundabout was one big sector, it would still work, but if you had a train coming this way and a train coming this way, they would wait for each other. Um, because they would imagine that they would collide in this block here. So you just need to set... Uh, you just need to use signals to separate things into... Uh, intersectors that make sense uh, for the uh, for the intersection and use chain signals everywhere except for uh, stackers I mean I don't know if I don't know if one would necessarily call this a stacker but it's succinct um, anywhere that you want a train to be able to stop on the way to its destination uh, that's the only place that you use a regular signal. Uh, so all of these regular signals here, those could be chain signals. You don't have to think about that because uh, because this train stops here. Chain signals reflect rail signals ahead of them. Uh, use them to stop trains going somewhere. They can probably block stuff. Long unbroken stretches should have rail signals or trains will have to wait for one train to clear off before the next can use it. That is correct. Um, absolutely. I just think it's less to remember, less to think about, if you just think chain signals, chain signals everywhere, and this is the exception, because we're allowing a train to stop here. All right, our ship has departed. Quartermaster it is, is crawling towards its destination, um, running off, running an ion engine off of solar power, but that's okay. Uh, its ETA for Calidus Asteroid Belt is about 15 minutes, I would say. At the moment, though, it's going to get slower as soon as it gets further away. This will actually be... Um, a necessary test of this ship. Uh, it should work, however poorly, anywhere within the solar system, I think. Uh, but it's going to take its sweet time getting there. The further it is from the sun, the longer it's going to take. Since at 4 megawatts it can only run this thing at about 40% of the time, and that's if we were ignoring the laser turret that needs to be powered. Um, but yeah. I kind of want to... No, it's fine. I can live with just the, the clamp on just one side for once. And we've already got our bots. Nice. Why do we have 51 logistic bots? Oh. Yeah, I should have made this negative 49. So it's 49 more than the one that it would normally put in. If we're going stack size one, read blacklist. Okay. Let's just confirm that. Um, yoink. And logistic bot 50. Perfect. Uh, so that probably means at Calidus Orbit we've got 134 logistic bots. Uh, okay, there's going to be some crashes. Do we have robo... Do we have repair packs here? Uh, yeah, we do. What was that? Oh! 
Wait, did we get... No, we don't have the... Oh, we do have data already. I missed the first launches. I'm surprised how much data we've already got. Wow. Uh, here we go. Another star probe being launched. Nice. Am I going to miss this one as well? Where is our ship? Asteroid belt probe data to... Okay, that's not here yet. And away you go. I would think it would be having an easier time accelerating from in space than on the gravity well of a planet. But... It's probably a bit difficult to patch in a whole other rocket animation. And there's our data. Nice. Well, I, I was saying that I would probably wait until... Um, not wait until this was full for the first trip. And... How many have we got? Four... 16 of these left. Uh, 16,000. We might just have enough, just barely, to fill this up automatically before this gets resupplied. Very nice. And back at Nalvis Orbit. Um... Energy Science 4, where is it? Here we go. Catalog Tier 4 is only waiting on the Star Probe data. We've already got our rail requests in place. Uh, we've got our drop-off slash pickup for Star Probe data here. And we're going to take off when it's back down to zero. Very nice. Um, and I'll just double check. So we've got the tier 4 catalog. And I think we built all this already. We've got our requests for tier 4 catalog here. And we're only waiting on quantum processors, really. Um, okay, we need to get our act together with those. I know we're making quantum processes here, but 2.6k is more than I was expecting to see. We're only making them here so we can make the computers. And we were only asking for 200. Um, I could go ahead and be really lazy and... set this thing to make enough quantum processes to trigger a delivery. I'll use it as a stop gap at least. What do they stack to? 50, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so... negative 8001 is the signal we need here. That's just so that the circuit here knows when these chests are full for exactly the amount they're going to put in the train. And... Can we hurry this up? There we go. It only takes one processing unit, and that was going to be our bottleneck, I expected. Yeah, that's kind of fast. I almost think we don't need to make a rail block for quantum processors. In 
In fact, as a novelty playthrough, I wonder how far I could go with auto crafters. It might actually be possible to save a ton of UPS by having fewer machines. This is going a lot faster than I was expecting. Quantum processor. In the last minute we've made 300. It's actually approaching how fast we're producing processing units overall. And we need one processing unit per quantum processor. We can't build those on the ground, right? Process. I think I would have built them on the ground if it was possible. Space manufacturing. Okay. This might actually be all we need. Is to let the... Uh, let the mole make quantum processes. Otherwise we're doing two belts in... One belt out, no fluids. But the machine is so fast that belts are going to struggle to keep up anyway. So we'd have to move all of this stuff, four different resources, to another rail block somewhere. And... The, this it, it actually makes a ton of sense just to let the autocrafter do it. Okay, uh, so that's it. I think we've got tier 4 energy science. Uh, we don't physically have it yet, but everything is in place. Uh, what should we research first? Energy 4. We've got energy weapon damage. That's actually pretty tempting. Except we need 1,200 uh, it, it won't take that long to get 1200, but there's probably something cheaper that I can get first. 400, 2400 for bot speed, ouch. Only 250 to get material fabricator. Synthesizes new materials across between a particle collider and a 3D printer. And we, for that we smash together... Thermodynamic facility, space manufactory, particle collider, five speed sixes, and five efficiency sixes. I'm pretty glad I've got tier six modules automated already. And what's this? Matter fusion. Fusion test data particle stream becomes 99 fusion... Oh, 99% fusion test data. A bunch of contaminated scrap. A junk data card. 1% of the time. Uh, and the thermofluid comes out hot. So, we have a 99% chance to turn particle stream into 15 contaminated scrap. Well, no, it always turns particle stream into 15 contaminated scrap. And 1% of the time... So it costs 1% of a fusion test data, is a, is a rough way to look at it. What goes into particle streams? Um... Material testing pack, sand, oh, it makes 200. One material testing pack, sand, 100 plasma stream. So one stone, 10 chemical gel, petroleum, cosmic water. This is hard to get a rough idea of. Is there a universe where we want to run that recipe? Or is it, like, a trick? 
Where's our ship? Uh, what a master it is, is still crawling past Soma. ETA, six minutes-ish, probably realistically more like ten. Um, still trying to figure out what would be the most exciting thing to unlock first. I mean, Material Fabricator is the cheapest one, and it's going to unlock a bunch of other stuff. Matter Fusion. Oh. Oh. We can turn Particle Stream into all sorts of things. Wow. Okay, we can't... We've already got through a bizarre alchemy... In a sense, we turn resources into other resources by destroying these. Um, because we've got too much Vitamelange, we're not sending Vitamelange core fragments unless we get rid of this. And the Vitam Vitamelange core fragments give us vanilla core fragments, which give us everything, all the basics, for example. Um, with this recipe, we can't... We can't, like, turn iron into copper, for example. But... As long as we're happy to make a bunch of particle stream, we could actually use, um... You could do it with, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Crafting combinators, switching the recipe up. Or you could just have a bunch of train stations offering these products. And then, like, just have low priorities on those stations for pickup. So it's the last place the trains look for pickup. So that if you run out of conventional source of iron, you start using particle stream for it. Only one second to make ten iron ore. Uh, wow. And we can literally turn Particle Stream into anything we want. That's interesting. That's very interesting. Okay, what else have we got? I definitely want the high temperature heat exchangers at some point. Ooh, Adaptive Armor 5. The, the final tier. We need tier 4 of everything for that. Just about. Um, what else? Not too excited about efficiency modules, to be honest. Uh, more energy weapon damage means our ships are going to go faster. Shield projector, that's cool. Oh, and we can get it. Hell yeah. Let's go for... This is one of the cheapest ones. How much is this? Energy 4, 2, 2. Okay, 500. I think I'll go for Shield Projector first. And that's a dead end. Uh, what about this one? We need a lot of tier 4s. And then next is Material Fabricator, Matter Fusion. Very cool. All right. Oh, we also probably theoretically have Astro 4. Uh, soon TM.
So this literally needs tier 4 of everything. Uh, spaceship. We can upgrade the integrity again. It costs 6400 though. And then the next tier requires deep space 1. Uh, lattice. We'll definitely want that. We need tier 4 of literally everything for high temperature heat exchanger. Tier 4 bio for that one, don't really care about it either. Deep space 1. Is this really all we can unlock with two tier 4 sciences? I think it is. Just like these five things, plus like laser damage. And bot speed, I guess. Well, that'll have to do. Hi, the master of Factorio circuit network. Hello, Krasus. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you again. And thanks for the compliment. Uh, Quartermart... I forgot... I, I, I sort of half forgot that looking at the research tree pauses the game. I was a little surprised at how slow the Quartermaster is crawling along for now. Um, but more importantly for the moment, where is our asteroid belt probe data? You're looking to pick up the output. Um, did I not... Did I not build... Probe. Star probe data 1, asteroid belt probe data. Asteroid Probe Rocket 1. Uh, you haven't taken off yet. Okay. We've got a whopping 9 Asteroid Belt Probes. That's 9,000 data. That's more than a train load. Um, I could perhaps launch this one early. Are you stuck? No, you're not stuck. What about you? What are you doing? You're also looking for space rocket probes. Okay. Um, I would kind of like to... I could add a constant combinator with some big negative numbers to this green wire. And we'll stop pretending that we've got... Uh... We'll pretend that we don't have probes available to pick up from the short train station. Oh, here we go. Uh, we've got another 13 asteroid belt probes available. Um, I'm a little suspicious of... Oh, I didn't put a provide threshold. Derp. How many should we go for? 10? I mean, in the long run, ideally 40, but I want these delivered right now. Um, actually, we're fine for star probes for now, so I'll put this to 40. Provide threshold, or provide stack threshold, it makes no difference. Uh, provide threshold. 10. So we should see a train scheduled to provide the asteroid belt probes uh, pretty much as soon as this one gets out of the way. Have you left this solar system? Absolutely. Uh, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4. Four, I think, the stars that we've uh, we've got resource outposts at. Uh, Deadwood is where we get our coal. It's running off of beamed power now. Oh, the edges are surprisingly cold. Huh. 
we do have enough power though, right? I think we're bottlenecking on power. We are bottlenecking on power. Um, what's the difference between this and Kenium? Nothing. Oh, uh, this connects here. But there's only the one connection up here. Except over here it's probably... No, this one's actually identical. To what we had on... Deadwood. It might just be that we've got, like, way more than enough here. And the pipe connections are insufficient. The heat pipe, that is. What I might do... ...is just sacrifice these so we can have some more heat pipe connections. see how much more effective that is at getting heat all the way to the end, or at least to more of the heat exchanges. Don't get 99.9% .9 of the way to your destination and then go to a RoboPort. Uh, do we have enough heat pipe? Yeah, we do. Heat pipe. We've got another 35. It's actually cutting it pretty close. Are these on the way? Yeah, they are. Alright, so heat should be increasing over here, but how much remains to be seen? We got to 480. It seems to have stopped. Well, that's at least one more heat exchanger or two down this way that can activate. A lot of the steam engines don't seem to be... Right about here is where we stopped getting enough heat. And yet these ones are active? That's pretty weird. This thing is at max temperature, so it's really just the... If, if these were like super heat pipes, like Naquium pipes or whatever, um, this exact same setup would be sufficient. But yeah, that should that should give us a little more throughput at least. I should have dropped off another energy beam receiver or two. Silly Factorio liquid sim simulation? Yeah. It's a little bit odd sometimes. Okay. Um what were we trying to fix? Asteroid belt probe data. You are almost ready. This is a bit slower than I was expecting. Maybe I could... Maybe I should put a beacon here. I'm sure we're going to bottleneck on the resources themselves anyway. How much have we got? 28k. So, four more launches, I think? Oh no, like ten more launches. 
three, we've got 12 satellites here. Fantastic. Okay. Did we get everything set up for this? I think we did. We should have... Oh, that's right. I was waiting to get just a little bit more... Asteroid belt. Actually, preferably, I would like to see... Um, uh, 38 uh, probe satellites before we launch. How much have we got already? We've got 22, and I think there was 10 over here. Oh, that includes those. So those did get delivered already. Cool. I just missed it. How much is the 400 astrometric science packs? Is that really all that we're getting out of Astros 4? Until we get other sciences. 400, that's, um, let's see. Astro... That's the old Astro science block, I need to get rid of that. It's already switched off. I need to remind myself to clean this up. This one. Uh, so one extended gives us eight Astro science packs. Uh, that's a lot. Yeah, I think we'll just launch this early. Um, so off you go to the asteroid belt. Calidus asteroid belt one. Fantastic. Do you think a version of SE will be the first DLC? Uh... There's like an expansion that they're working on, the devs with the, including the developers of SE. Uh, that's going to be like a whole new, a whole lot of stuff added to Factorio. Uh, is what I have heard. We're just waiting for a satellite. Okay. What's wrong with this? Oh, nothing. Fantastic. I'm really tempted to send this thing home already. 29,000 star probe data gives us uh, 29,000 tier 4 catalogs, I believe. Yeah. And 29,000 tier 4 catalogs gives us many, more, over 200,000 um, energy science pack 4s. I think we're going to bottleneck on something else first. I just have this strong feeling that that's what's going to happen. Why have we not received our quantum processors yet? We ran out of processing units. Oh uh, no. Oh, no. Well, there's really no point sending the data early, I guess. Wait, how much did we end up with? Processor. We're almost there. We just need another... 2.3 thousand. But we, we need one delivery of blue circuits. Um, before... We're going to have what we need. There's a few over here. The old blue circuit drop-off is gone. I'm guessing this thing is... Oh, not even close to bottlenecked on rocket fuel. Yeah, we're kind of struggling with blue circuits. Um, is it actually... 
I think it's actually not inputs for the blue circuits anymore. It's literally just we don't have enough machines. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually not sure if we have enough machines or if we're still trying to catch up. How many prod sixes do we have? Um, I would like to build another... We've got 309 here, plus I'm carrying 300. Uh, I'm pretty sure we can make another block like this. Uh, red and blue circuits. I don't know if we actually need any more red circuit production, to be honest. It made sense at the time. Well, I, I can defunct the old red circuit builds and we'll have more productivity bonus. Uh, 640. We're devastatingly close to building another one of these. I think by the time we get there, we'll be able to. Um, T6, red, and blue. Let's build that here. And the rest of the rail block goes here. We don't need the old power poles. Construction spiders. I left them over here. Or construction spiders. Having that one rail was closer than I thought to keeping up with this mine. Or is it just that our coal demand is dropping off? I could bump up the train limit on these. That would probably make a pretty big difference. Uh, anyway, spiders back to the mole just to make sure you're resupplied. And then head over here, please. Is the shuttle carrying tier 6 modules? I believe it is. I think I'll just have it go to Nalvis. And we'll have it land right next to the build. Have the spiders put down a robopod. Oh. Usually I put down a roboport and then put logistic bots in it to automatically pick up all the prod modules, but that's not... I could land it in range of the mall and have the bots deconstruct the buffer chests and then put them back. Thank you for the follow, Evil Laxel. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, Zithrius, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Time to double my hours, indeed. Is that a beacon in the middle of the red circuit assemblers? Yes. Uh, wide area beacons. Um, so in space exploration, you can only get one beacon effect. Uh, you, you can only buff a machine with one beacon, which makes for much cleaner builds. Um, the wide area beacon has a lot more slots for, for modules than the basic one. And there's actually a wide area beacon too. 
Um, this one has slots for... it doesn't say. Oh, here we go. 15 module slots or 20 when upgraded. I guess this one... yeah, 15 to 20. Um, but it actually has the same area and the same energy cost. Um, so yeah, 15 modules in this. Nice, big, clean. It, it, it looks so much nicer, in my opinion, than vanilla beacon spam. I haven't played with any overhaul mods yet due to there being an overwhelming amount of content. There really is. I would probably consume vanilla Factorio um, before you look at something like space exploration. The size and scope of it is just gargantuan. And I'm here for it. Here is our resupply ship. Working as intended. Fantastic. My 1k hours aren't enough. Well, it's not so much the hours, but the skills you pick up. Which, of course, take time, but maybe you've got a little bit of the groundwork from somewhere else. Like, if you've played any factory game, uh, certain fundamentals have been figured out. I actually am a bit surprised at how long this thing is taking. I thought it would be strictly, strictly bottlenecked on... Um, on resources. It might even be worth bringing a beacon out here. Eventually. But for now, I, I don't think we're going to have to worry about it. But I'm watching this launch because this is actually it. I think... Input signal's 32k. Oh. No, I'm wrong. I thought we were looking for 32,000 something. This is actually... We actually need uh, six launches. So I think by the time this thing goes back to Nalvis orbit automatically, we should have the uh, quantum processors that we need to support uh, tier 4 energy science. I really want to see this one working before I go. Uh, Asteroid Probe Rocket 1 is actually just about to arrive. Beautiful. Uh, so yeah, energy science... not energy science. Well, yes, energy science. Um, energy weapon damage upgrade is actually going to be very helpful for the speed of the spaceships because it makes it take less energy to shoot down an asteroid and all of our ships are bottlenecked on power so if it if we get like a million energy weapon damage upgrades and it takes you know two watts to shoot down an asteroid then we're going to be able to move this thing at full speed That was working. Very nice. It took off because it ran out of asteroid belt probes, even though it had space rocket probes. Space probe rockets, rather. And here comes our first uh, asteroid belt data. Any second now. Fantastic. Cool. Uh, how many robots have we got here? 50. Perfect. Let's leave before they come back into this robocort. Uh, was there somewhere I meant to go with... No, 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 don't come here, don't... You silly bots. Okay. 
now we're going to dip into our reserves of logistic parts. And we're back to 50. So that's working quite well. Um, I wanted to go to Deadwood. That's going to take a while, though. Just to give it um, another energy beam receiver. So, wait, that's not Deadwood. I also want to go to Orchard to get energy beaming set up. Um, Deadwood. How much heat are we getting to the edge now? 483. It's still increasing. I'm surprised how much difference that made. I'm actually very surprised how much difference that made. So, currently, we're getting 500 degrees all the way to uh, these heat exchangers here. So we should be getting... Oh, that's fantastic. That little change actually just pushed it over the edge. So that we're running the uh, four mining drills at full speed at night. Apparently the inserters are not keeping up. Uh. No. Yeah, uh, there's the problem. Okay. I think this will sort itself out. Because the bots are taking from the active provider chests directly to the spaceship. They're not taking this extremely short path where they have incredibly high throughput where they drop it into the nearest um, storage chest so these chests have actually filled up therefore our inserters have slowed down uh, unless we've got we do have a ship waiting to land as well um, I think we maybe need more bots do we have the uh, trucks delivering more bots? We should do. They are not delivering more bots. Why not? I thought I fixed this. Um, bots? No bots. You're trying to take off. You don't have enough. Oh, you did take off. So why do we not have bots here? Apparently we've got... 4,000 logistic bots. But... They're not in the chests available for... Yeah, we need a system that actually keeps bots in a chest. Should have thought of this. Is it possible... Um, let me do a... Bonk. Indeed. Uh, let me go for... Logistic... But... Less than... 200? It's odd that there's no bots in this particular RoboPod. That should be a filter insider, I guess. Oh, this needs to be a... a storage chest or passive provider or something. Um, the... The train that delivers the bots... I could do it here instead, that would make more sense. But as it is, we need to use what's already been delivered. Um, so this, this should be a passive provider. Make it pass, uh, filter or they'll take construction bots, yeah. Oops. Okay. 
Okay. We, of course, won't necessarily get Logi bots or construction bots sent to that particular robopod. Um, so how would this be set up? Construction bots go here. Set filters. I need to do what I just did at the asteroid field. Which is, we read from, um, sorry, not the asteroid field, but I think over here, we read from the chests to decide if we've got enough bots, and then we take from the chests for available logistic, available bots. That's the way to go about it. Um, I wish I could have two filters on a storage chest. The thing is, this train stop is reading an awful lot from the logistic network. I could just remove robot statistics, though. Yeah, that's what I did before. Well, no, not quite. But I'll stop reading robot statistics. And we'll read from this chest. I don't think the filter matters. Well, it, it makes sure we don't get stuff that we don't want stored in here, actually. Uh, Bilbo, thank you very much for the Prime sub. Much appreciated. You could make a setup with combinators. Forgot that I had that. Lol, no worries. Cheers. Uh, you could make a setup with combinators and check box content and available bots. Only if you have enough stored in the box will the RoboPot receive some. Yep, that's what we're doing. So this is available bots as their associated signal, uh, set filters blacklist, and then instead of reading available bots from here, as far as LTN is concerned, we don't have any bots here right now. It's only going to read the bots from the chest. And we're going to set our target a bit lower. Well, 150 is fine, actually. Alright, and then... We can probably get rid of this cobbled together solution. Once a train arrives with some more bots, that is. Um, so I'm just going to make sure I've got the same settings over here. And that should that should resolve that. Cool. So now we've actually got some logistic bots in these uh, ships. And in time, we should see Deadwood having a cloud of bots here. As opposed to the 20? We've been losing bots here because they get kidnapped and we haven't been resupplying them. I just hope none of our outputs have dropped down to zero bots. Um, not this one. Orchard is looking okay. Uh, Morpheus, not the male line. Morpheus 8, do you have bots? I imagine not. 
Um, star map, Morpheus, and 874 logistic bots. I think Morpheus will be okay for a minute, but what's going on here? Uh, oh. Okay, I added chests to this. I forgot to change the target condition for how many barrel core fragments we need. But also, we do still have enough launch energy, that's fine. Okay, how much do we have? Um, it's a lot. 27 chests of barrel core fragments is 129,600. Um, we're going to go 129,597, greater than or equal, because sometimes the bots are a bit weird about filling a chest. Come to think of it, I guess theoretically we'd need to drop 3 times 27 from the target, um, because... It's theoretically possible that every single one of those chests could be not quite filled. But so far, I've only ever seen it happen twice this entire playthrough. And it's just one chest that's not quite full. The bots can pick up as many as four, I think. Uh, four cargo at a time. So sometimes you end up with like two cargo missing and they won't pick up more is the problem. Um, it's a multiple of four uh, core fragments that goes into a chest. So I think for this to happen we have to have we have to have run out of the resource that it's picking up and we have to be unlucky. So I could see how that's happened so rarely. I think I'll just check on the ships every once in a, uh, once in a while. I mean, I should be doing that anyway. We catch things like this. And I'll change this to... Uh, greater than or equal... Whenever the time comes. I should also patch all the Morpheus ships to have more cargo capacity. Uh, as for how many chests we can cram into the other ones, I'm not sure. It depends on the size of the planet that they're trying to take off from. And how much fuel we can produce there. Uh, Morpheus radius is 4177. Deadwood is a bit bigger than that. Orchard is a little bit smaller. So I should probably upgrade all of our ships. Uh, we're back at Nalva's orbit. Fantastic. What should we work on next? I almost forgot I was doing that uh, red and green circuit build. Let's get the joyride to drop down here. And I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to get the prod sixes out of this. Um, I might have to have the spiders remove the chests temporarily. Maybe I could have taken advantage of a nearby bot network. Maybe I still could. 
Um, I think we've got a system up here to get rid of anything that's not supposed to be in this bot network, though. Yeah, we do. Okay. How about... I think I'm going to regret this. Deconstruction planner, green chest, go... And... Pencil. Yep, yeah, this isn't going to work out so well, I think. I'm perfectly happy to do it if we get all of the prods put in. But it doesn't seem to be going that way. I also forgot that I actually need the... Um, I actually need the productivity modules that I'm carrying, personally. That could have saved us some time. Let's bring... Ah. Let's bring the joyride back up here. Already. Now this orbit. And I guess we're stealing the construction bots from our spiders. How have we not got green set? Oh, we do. They're just arriving now. Fantastic. Where is the joyride? Two seconds. And... Land. Fantastic. Oh, that's weird. Undoing the deconstruction didn't replace these uh, this wire. Fair enough. We do have spaceship parts in the joyride. Or at least spaceship walls. Okay. Back down to Navis. Still got plenty of fuel in the tank. Once we built the red and green, sorry, the green and blue circuit production, um, what's our next target, I wonder? Should probably start chipping away at the other tier 4 sciences. What's this missing? Oh. Okay, why do we keep getting space probe rockets dumped in here? Oh. Hold on. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm probably requesting too many probes for how many chests I'm reading here. Also, this isn't connected. That might be the problem. How many probes am I requesting? 900. Uh, we've got three... Uh, three, six... Hold on. One, two, three, four, eight... Chests of space rocket probes we're looking for. Um... Forty-eight times eight, three hundred and eighty-four. We're we're asking for way too many space rocket probes. Um. Yeah. Let's go with. I wish I could blacklist space rocket probes on this storage chest. That'd be useful. Or I could just make this not the storage chest. 
But then if anything that's not supposed to be here ends up stuck in this robot network, it's not going anywhere. Like this uh, pylon substation, for example. Um, yeah, I think we'll just go for... How much is a train load? 160. Um, well, it's eight chests. One, two, three, four. Let's just go for two train loads. Uh, 320. That'll leave some slack as well. And we'll also be getting just as many probes. What am I doing 324 for? 320. Uh, we'll have just as many probe rockets over here. To make up the difference. That should be fine. What are you delivering? Even more probe rockets? Don't bother. And how many how many quantum processes do we have? 7.5k. We're getting really close to... Well, what is this set to? 400 stacks? That might be a little bit much. Uh, how much is 10,000? That's our target, right? 10,000 divided by 50, 200 stacks. Is there anything... What am I requesting up here? One train load, one train load, quarter of a train load, one train load. This should be a train load. I don't think I'm requesting more than a train load of anything. Uh, biomass is 160. Oh, no, it stacks to 5, doesn't it? Yeah. I think it'll be okay if we drop this down to 200. So anything that we've got significantly more than a train load of in this block, we want to make it available to the rest of the rail network. I mean, we already do that with the short trains with a stack size of only one, actually. But more to the point, I just don't want the rail bringing things around in circles. If I had the request amount lower than uh, lower than this, that also gets rid of all of this scrap that we had lying around. Fantastic! All right, so blue circuits. We're still waiting on them from Alvis. We are painfully close. Almost. What are you doing? What are you doing? Uh-oh. Did I set the requests for explosives too high? It looks like it. 64k. Uh, how much have we got in these storage chests? 32 times 2400. 76,800. So how did we get... These are full. Okay, what? This wire is connected to the storage chests for explosives. How did we get this full plus 7.2 train loads 
and more. Like, at least eight trainloads of explosives excessive were delivered here. Let me do the math again. 2400 times 32 is what we can fit in the storage chests. 76,800. We're asking for 64,000. The wire is connected. We can only read contents from a storage chest. So that setting is not... Oh! I think I see the problem. Yep, that's it. Always check your wiring. Okay, back you go. And that'll sort itself out eventually. Cool. Um, are we ready to land? Of course. Let's drop in here. And I'm going to do my usual, throw in some logistic bots so they pick up all that stuff from the various chests. And I think we can send our construction spiders home at this point. We've built the smallest ship with an ion engine. Something I should have done before is build the smallest ship with a rocket engine. I wonder how low we can go for the cost of liquid rocket fuel to take off from Nervous. I've actually got the spaceship builder spider sitting over here somewhere. It should still have um, everything we need to build a rocket. I'm just thinking I'll use this to transport thing, uh, relatively low throughput things like uh, modules down to Nervous Orbit. So we're going to go for one uh, rocket engine. A single, I hope. I should certainly think so. If we can launch um, 16 chests, just barely, with two liquid rocket fuel engines, then I should think a chest or two shouldn't be a problem for just one engine. Unfortunately, we need to put this one tile away. It's already wider than I want it to be. We need a console. I might have to make it asymmetrical. I know, the horror. And we also need a solar panel. How could you? I just don't have a way around it. The, um, this one's actually a little bit asymmetrical as well, but at least the uh, ion engine is the same width as the flat solar panel, is the same as two of these boosters. Excuse me. Uh, is the same width as these ion booster tanks that fit together with it nicely. But the rocket... Oh. Let me make sure I get the rest of these done. Uh, do we not have enough prod modules? What are those bots doing? What are those... 
Oh, I think those are the uh, construction bots belonging to our spiders. Okay, we've got another 50 prod sixes here. Hopefully that's enough. I think we might be a little bit short. Nope. We've got 22 to spare. It's getting a little cold. Rod 6, indeed. Costco Takitos, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, now that we've got the Holmium cable flowing... Uh, we shouldn't have any trouble catching up with blue circuits, I hope. That That is my forlorn hope. Okay. Uh, I don't think the structural integrity is going to matter that much. Actually, it is. I was trying to make this thing as small as possible, but I ended up giving it three chests just because we couldn't get hull stress any lower than this. So we're probably going to do about the same thing here. You know what I could do? Uh, I was going to say, if we really want this to be as symmetrical as possible, I could go for a regular solar panel. It literally just has to have some energy to make the trip between Nalvis and Nalvis orbit. On the other hand, uh, but the other thing is that the console is 4x4. Four four. Um, this might be a really bad idea, but I want to try it as an experiment. We might even... How much does this use? 103 kilowatts. Uh, and that's when it's... When it's thrusting. We might just be able to get away with only having an accumulator for the whole thing. And we will need at least one laser turret. It is an extremely short trip. Uh, this is actually already as far down as it can go, believe it or not. Yeah, it is an extremely short trip uh, from Nalvis to Nalvis orbit. So I think an accumulator is actually... might be all we need. And then... some spaceship walls. I don't care if it's a... if it's a box. What's our structural integrity looking like? Hull stress is only 57.25. I think putting in a single chest, we've got 25 container stress from one spaceship rocket booster tank. I'm surprised how low that is. Um, but I'm thinking putting in literally just one uh, chest is going to is going to bump the hull stress up, uh, container stress beyond the hull stress. Nope, not quite. So how much energy does it take to launch? Forty nine gigajoules. Uh, and if we've got two full liquid rocket fuel tanks, it's two hundred per tank. Uh, so it takes a quarter of a tank, which is 25,000, which is less than a cargo rocket. So 
So half the liquid rocket fuel that it takes to launch a cargo rocket. Um, with none of the baggage of uh, capsules and cargo rocket sections and so on. And no crashing. Um, 25,000 fuel to deliver 48 stacks is a lot, of course. Um, but it is pretty convenient for the purpose of just bringing modules down, for example. We'll be needing a clamp or two. Hopefully this... 50-50, hopefully this lines up. It... Oh. Uh, I should have thought of that. We don't strictly need a clamp, but... It's, it, it's a nice to have. I could put it here. Do I have to have the spaceship floor there for the clamp? I think. And the walls can go up here. Okay, integrity check. Uh, hull stress 60. And I'm, I have no doubt if we put another chest. 73. So that puts us up to... Uh, 62 gigajoules to launch, as opposed to... 51. I think that's worth it to double our double our capacity. And so 51 for one chest, 62 for two chests. Eighty two for three chests. Uh, 82 gigajoules is getting close to half a tank. It's more than a cargo rocket. I think two chests is about what we're looking at for this design. So we're going to... Read from the, combina uh, read from the accumulator. Actually, no. I don't think we want to automate our signal speed for this one. Um, we literally just want to set the target speed very low. Um, it'll still just take a few seconds to get where we're going. But maybe like five or something. Okay. And clamp IDs. I don't know what that's going to be. Um. Is this, as, is this literally as small as we can get? Whoops. I was just trying to... Get rid of that person. We can actually put these here. Uh, I wonder if it would be worth making the ship a little bit smaller. Ulstra, 63. Uh, it's not going to make a difference if we have the extra chest. That's a little bit too asymmetrical for me. I think that'll do. Um, we'll read the... Uh, 
fuel and the contents of the chests from the clamp. And I haven't decided what uh, signal clamp we'll use. Clamp signal. I think you're using spaceship right clamp to target left. Power poles, good call. Uh, and we can actually... I was going to say... We can actually... Cover everything under a medium pole. Uh, but that's a lie. Once again, we need those miniature poles, but... I haven't got them supplied everywhere. meant to put one of these here. This is like the second or third or fourth time medium poles have been like one tile too short to do what I need them to do for this. Uh, I feel like this is just going to look a little bit better. Okay. I think that's pretty much it. Let's make a blueprint. Including tiles. Uh, let's call it the module box. And... Shove that into... Space exploration. Um, we can actually remove this now. Makes more sense to build it in space. Just have to decide where to build it. Um, I'm thinking down here makes as much sense as anywhere. Let's look at the robo supply network. Hmm. I don't want to have to pipe the rocket fuel up here. I might just have to change this pipe a little bit. Uh, we're not actually using that bit of pipe anymore. At least, not on this side. Here it comes. Oh, and we've got the small poles. Fantastic. Dual box. And I'm going to stop requesting modules. Well, I don't know, it maybe couldn't hurt to leave some in the... No, I, I think I'll stop requesting them in the, uh, uh, the joyride ship. And I won't use set requests, I'll just put this here. Productivity modules is the main thing that I keep wanting brought down to Nalvis. Um, and of course it wouldn't hurt to have a supply of the other two. Probably a bit more than that. And I 
can't think of anything else that I keep wanting from Navis Orbit. Just for now. Oh, you're kidding me. It's one tile out from being in the robot network. Uh... If I... I don't want these to connect. I don't necessarily need that robopod there. Can I move this down a tile? Yeah, I think that would be best. That actually can connect here. Still out of range, actually. No, I need one more tile. Uh, this needs to be three or four. And I kind of want to rescue that water. How can I do that? Waste not, want not. Water in space is not free. Fantastic. And here's our pump from over here. Thank you very much. For, that was very helpful. Oh, and because this can hold 400 water, it's actually already possible to delete those pipes. Okay, uh, we do need to remove this one, it's going to be four and four, that works. Fantastic. Uh, and what clamp ID are we going to use here? I wish I could... Mm, I should have made a list. I wish I could look up what clamp IDs are already in use. Okay, so we're doing tier 6 modules, tier 6 modules, and tier 6 modules. So clearly... That should be fine. And I didn't even check, but our accumulator is getting charged just by being here. Come to think of it, I'm going to have to make sure I land this thing where there's some solar power, where there's a, a power pole. You should add a bot command that give you gives you the next bot ID. Uh, as in, add a command to Twitch that gives me the next clamp ID. Yeah. I need to go through and make a list of the ones I'm already using. Alright, so why are we not receiving any prod modules here? Did we already take them all and we still haven't resupplied any? We've got zero. Zero prod modules um, of the tier 6 variety up here right now. We're not bottlenecking on blue circuits just yet. We've, I can see those are here. But it looks like we're about to run out. Not in Roboport range yet. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're just gonna leave that thing there for a while. I should. I would have thought we'd have. Um, I see five hundred efficiency threes here. Oh. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot to bring this down a little bit. Okay. But that does tell me we don't have the... any of the speed or rod modules available just yet. Okay. And I think we want all of the prod modules. In fact, uh, 500 speed and efficiency is probably fine. Alright, so we've finished this build. Fantastic. How are we out of red circuits? On this side. There's no copper yet. I don't think we have copper problems just yet, but let's check. 24k, that's actually pretty alarming. Uh, 13k. 37. We are actually getting low on copper. 22k. Okay then. Um, copper core fragments. We've got... Sange in the Angulus system, which is where Morpheus is. Uh, it's actually got a pyramid that we haven't visited as well. It is very big. Do we have oil? We do have oil. Uh, I think we should... This is about the same distance as... Um, what is it called? Orchard? Where we're getting our copper fragments from. Hello, is space being explored? Indeed. Tumbling satellite, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Black Op, name in base, sure. Let's go for here. L A C I thought we had a C. Oh, yeah, we do. Do we want the numbers? And... P. Construction spiders over this way, please. And that should just about... Cover it. Uh, why don't I just put in our measured uh, substations here? Cool. Now then, how's our science looking? Oh, we got data. We got a lot of data. Fantastic. Have we received the star probe data yet? Uh, yes. Yes, we have. It is either on its way back, or it already got to Nalvis orbit. Star probe data one. It's already come back looking for more. So we've got our star probe data here. Beautiful. Uh, wait. So did it already... I see a bunch of bots died here, which means we had lots of bot activity. Did it already send all of the... Uh, we've got three train loads worth here. A train came and picked it up already, as well. I'm surprised how quickly we've uh, consumed it, or sent it somewhere else. How much are we requesting here? 16k? That's like... almost half. Energy... extended energy catalogue. Uh, cool. And we've got some bug with the 
There's not 24 chests here, that's the problem. With the loader. Nice. That means we've probably got the same bug over here. This one's actually got 24 chests. And that is... Oh, that's only broad. Here it is. Negative 16. I already fixed this one. What about for... Bio Catalog 4? Negative 16. And Material 4... Negative 16. Okay, cool. Uh, so that is it. I wonder if we got... We actually didn't get our quantum processes before... Um... That's weird, we stopped making them. Processor. We've got 10k. Quantum processor, 10k. That should be enough to... Oh. Iridium plate. I see what the problem is here. I haven't added a... I haven't defined how much is a train load of Iridium plate. 6.4k is how much we have. This needs to equal negative 1. Something has to equal negative 1 for this to trigger the latch. Iridium plate. Negative 6,401. And we know we got it right because the inserters started swinging. But that might happen with another resource or two since we dropped the provide threshold here. But we actually do already have the um, the quantum processes. So we've got everything we need, uh, literally, for Energy 4. We just need to make sure they get there. Data? Data is disgust? What? Here we go. That was quicker than expected. I've already programmed in the amount for quantum uh, processes. So we're going to load these chests the moment they're full. And we know that these inserters are going to stay in sync when they swing. Uh, we're going to trigger that latch. Joke about the pronunciation of the word data, indeed. But data is beautiful. And... They should all be full at about the same time. Indeed it is. I wonder if I can still improve on this. This is my latest design for the fastest possible reliable loader for a multi-cargo wagon train from the logistic network to LTN. Um, because there's more than one cargo wagon, we need to keep the inserters swinging at exactly the same time and manage their stack size. The reason we've only got four inserters per cargo wagon is because we need to have these active provider chests uh, to remove to remove anything that's left over once we're finished. If I can come up with a layout that allows me to cram in some more inserters per cargo wagon, uh, this will get significantly faster. The only other option, really, is for each separate cargo wagon, we need to count as we put items into it. Which, I think that's the next thing I'm going to try. So that would allow us to have... I don't... 
Let me just put a station here so we can see where these would fit. I don't think we can do much better than this. Um, well, actually, even if I do... Let's assume I make, like, the perfect circuit for maximizing... Uh, for having all of these inserters swinging as fast as possible um, and not over... Uh, not trying to put extra items into the train so the inserters don't stick out when they're done. Um, I also need to... Let's say that we have the requester chests here directly. I need to set requests though. That means I can't read from these. So we need to read the count from the stack inserters. So we'll need a memory cell. We, we can put all the circuitry stuff... Uh, what am I doing? Off to the side. So that effectively isn't going to take up any space horizontally. A perfect circle. Love the bend, indeed. Um... Whoops. We need to set requests, which means we can't read from the chests. And we need to have at least one chest. Well, I mean, all, all of these chests need to be able to... to be emptied after the fact. So, once we detect that a train is no longer here, I guess these don't even need filters. Uh, once we detect that there's no train, we can shovel that back into the active provider chests. What if we just request like one stack at a time for each of these chests? And we use our typical precise balanced loader system, but we need a separate one for each cargo wagon. We don't have to wait till the bots have put everything here. We don't have to keep each cargo wagon... Oh, sorry, let me rephrase that. We don't have to keep all of the separate cargo wagon inserters swinging in sync. We just have to use a counter to keep track of what's being put into each individual cargo wagon. And then some arbitrary inserter will have to be the last one that puts the last few items in. This is one way we could do it without knowing when our items have arrived. Yeah, I think this is the kind of thing that's going to take a while uh, to tweak. I think that is what I am going to play with uh, in editor extensions next time. I have been satisfied with how effective this loader system has been working, but it could be faster. Um, and it may even be bottlenecking our Omni smelters. I don't think so, though. It would probably help a great deal if I set filters on the storage chests, so that all of the final products are stored down here. That's probably all it takes. Yeah, that would be a much better idea. Okay, so copper is beginning to look a little bit sad, apparently. Uh, 
Do we have any more copper that we can exploit on Nalvis? There's a little patch here. Why is this not working? Oh, it is working. Why is it... Why is this one in particular full? All of these stations are set up the same. Oh, it because it's in the middle. It's getting more stuff. Okay, I think I'll just bump up the train limit on these two. Um, we have some copper here. I guess we should go get it. Not my favorite activity, making more mines. Um, that's why I built this incredibly lazy uh, mining blueprint. And we can literally just tile it across here. It's not the most throughput optimized thing. Uh, but it is definitely efficient use of my time optimized. And then we need some rail coming down here as well. Um, I'm just going to be super lazy and go... This rail goes here. And... This rail... Just want to make sure it doesn't crisscross. Uh, this rail can go here. Uh, chain signal. Where are our oh, no, spiders? Let's make sure they follow this path. We will need some pylons. Did that? Yeah, it did. And we'll need some signals. Uh, right about here, I should think. Make sure those are going to be sufficient. Fantastic. And we need to separate these ones as well. Cool. That should be... A fire and forget mine construction, in theory, done in record time. Also throw one down here. And connect like so. And we'll have the... I'll wait and make sure they built this properly before I queue them up to go all the way down here. Why are these trains all... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's definitely room for a train here. What are you waiting for? Oh, you're trying to go over here. I like how the pathing for this one arbitrarily goes to the right and then goes back to where this train is, uh, when it could apparently just be overtaking this one. Oh, no, it couldn't. Wait, why is this one... Oh, I see, that that's where an intersection would normally be. Yeah, this is the part where... 
so in hindsight, um, well, next next playthrough, I want to try it, but I think it's going to be dangerous messing with it this time. Um, when we have these bits or the like the highway sections, uh, early experiments yielded poor results with the trains being able to go both ways on both tracks. But I think if I set it up so that they can go so that there's a rail signal, a regular a regular signal going into the the straight track on one side and a chain signal going in the opposite direction. And this one's a rail signal and this one's a chain signal. They should be able to use the right lane for overtaking. And they'll never actually block each other. In theory. I might even... I might even run that experiment here. We'll send the spiders over this way after the um, after they've finished building this, which is looking pretty good so far. Fantastic. I wonder if there's more iteration. I could make on the lazy mind design. I am quite satisfied with the fact that I can literally just throw this down, connect the rails, and it's done though. And if you want more throughput, just build more mines. It is connected to everything. Cool. Mining is happening. Fantastic. That's looking pretty good. Are we short some modules? No, we're not. Fantastic. Okay, let's bring our spiders all the way over here, build another lazy mine, and place these experimental signals, please. Oh, there's also a little tiny amount of copper here. It's hardly worth bothering. Alright, what else have we got going on? Still sitting here in my shuttle, wondering if I should go back to orbit just yet. Do I have any more prod sixes? Maybe I should drop off the meager amount of prod sixes I have. Uh, these are all tier three, but ir iridium just isn't a problem. On the other hand, we could make our plastic go further. We're ultimately bottlenecking on coal. We've already got the coal uh, core fragment block. Rod 6. And it can keep up with all the core fragments we're getting for now. was this? Don't want that there. Be gone old power poles. Pretty sure we've got substations everywhere now. Substations. How are our blue circuits looking? We made a delivery. Fantastic. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, where... I think 
vanilla core fragments. I should definitely take the time to drop off the mere 26 prod 6s I have here. Uh, for those... How many are we missing here? More than I'm carrying. Okay. I think I'll take a short break. Uh... See if I can reset my... Pro oh, I should have picked up the energy beam receiver. I'll get a bunch of them. Actually, I'm pretty sure... Well, no, I know for a fact the... Uh... No, I don't, because I added a bunch of chests to this. Without any more liquid rocket fuel tanks. It might have trouble taking off from Narvis. In fact, I had to remove chests so that it could take off from Penium. Penium is radius 9,400. This is 5,692. Uh, we know that the... Oh, now that I think about it. Once that ship gets back with, um, what was it, like 23 chests of beryllium core fragments? I don't think it's going to be able to take off from Nalvis. Uh, with 10 chests here, we're looking at 415 gigajoules. Um, how much was a tank again? 200 gigajoules. 415. Yeah, so... So a little bit more than half of the fuel it takes this thing to take off. At container stress... I think it's hull stress, whichever's bigger. So at 496, it takes a bit more than half our fuel. And... Uh, this thing is at 600. If I put these chests back... Get rid of that one. Well, let's approximate. 750. So it's like 50% more. It should be able to take off from Nalvis. And if it can't, I'll just remove some chests. Well, I'm currently... I think it's better if I just go pick up some energy beam receivers, personally. I'll do that after the break. Let's go back to our shuttle. And I'll leave you with... LTM screensaver. Right after this. Back in a few minutes.
Okay, good time for an autosave. Let's continue, shall we? Uh, I was going back up to bring back... Huh. When did I pick this up? Well, not complaining, that's actually great. Uh, let's go deliver our energy beam receiver. And I believe I set up the deconstruction spiders to carry some... I would say nuclear stuff, although this isn't nuclear. Uh, I think we may already have a beam aimed at... Nervous? Uh, let's see, this one was autoglaving Soma. So we've got those available at 8 gigawatts. That's more than we need. Um, this is 4 gigawatts. It's already aimed at Pentium. I should have remembered to set this up while I was um, back on... Uh, back at Calidus Orbit. I should probably... We've got some bots. Do we have a storage chest? I should have put a storage chest here. Um, since we've got construction bots... If I throw in some storage chests, some roboports, and or radar construction pylons, and leave a stash of energy beam emitting stuff over here. We could reconfigure this at will. This is for charging up the hot box. I actually, I believe it... Oh, whoops, 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 whoops. Uh, let's go with this. I believe it's uh, 2.4 gigawatts is the practical limit for this thing. And that's just because even though this can go to 10,000 degrees, we're still using regular heat pipes, which will only effectively transport the heat so far. It's not so much distance as it is how many heat exchanges are trying to take from it. Um, so I'll just double check again. Uh, 240 heat exchanges is 240 times 10, 2400 megawatts. Yeah, so we, we only need like three. Uh, we only need like three energy beam emitters, uh, energy beam injectors per, um, per target. Unfortunately, we can't squeeze uh, six of these onto one chamber and connect like so. That would be convenient. Um, but since we're not using this thing anyway right now, uh, I'll aim this at Nalvis. And right about here. If it's set on Energize, it's not going to arm anything. Oh, and we're here already. And our spiders are doing the... There is a giant ghost underneath my feet dance. Fantastic. And it's already heating up rapidly, despite all of the heat pipes uh, taking from 12 directions. Fantastic. Uh, we're obviously going to need to connect this to the main power network. And did we actually build everything here? I thought we would be perhaps missing offshore pumps, but now I recall I got the the lead spider here to carry some. Cool. Let's build another one. Why not? Uh, 
so this is going to go right about here, I think. We really only need... I, I could jam it into the land as long as the pumps all fit where they need to, but I like this more. These things aren't going to, like, tile together too well or anything. Yeah, I could put it here, I just don't like the look of it, and we've got plenty of room. Alright, deconstruction spiders. Away. I don't think I have any more than one energy beam receiver right now, so we'll come back to this. Uh, we will be needing... Another pylon. And let's head back to our ship. Oh, didn't connect this yet. There we go. No input fluid. We've got water. We're just waiting for enough temperature for steam. Nice. Oh, suddenly we're throwing a few butts out. Let's wait for them. And I think we're going to be a little short on pumps, so I may as well wait till we drop all of this landfill. I'm actually pleasantly surprised we can do this all in one go. Ooh. And let's be very, very careful about where we place this. There we go. Fantastic. Do we have any pumps? Yes, yes we do. I was going to say I think that's it for my parts, but apparently not. done. Cool, let's head back to the ship. And where did I put it? Oh, here it is. Actually, I'll drop by the mall to make sure I'm resupplied and stuff. And deep construction spiders can... are they not carrying pipes? They are not carrying pipes. I'll get the construction spiders to pay this place a visit as well, perhaps. I'm surprised how much they built in one go, that's great. We're literally just missing pipe. How much pipe is in this blueprint? Uh, 668. So if they all carry less than one stack, it's going to be more than enough. Don't want to update the leader. There we go. You guys can... Come back with some pipe, please. Fantastic. Back to the ship. And I haven't seen that we're having a whole lot of trouble with plastic for a minute. That's really good. Holmium cable is almost saturated. That is excellent. And solenoids are already saturated. Very, very nice. Okay. Uh, what about our energy signs? 
We're just waiting on catalogs. I thought we had catalogs. Uh, I'm kind of a little bit glad because otherwise I would have missed it. Oh, right. This was saturated, but I had to fix the balanced loader circuit. And we produce these quite slowly. We've got the resources, though. So we're at 5.2k catalogs. Once we've got almost 8,000, uh, it'll summon a train. How fast is this? Oh, this is the old computers and tier 3 modules. Uh, it is 3.84 per second. That's a little slow. That is more than a little slow. 3.844 per second. So we're looking at like a thousand seconds before we get our first energy science. I don't think I can tolerate that. Uh, Fred, sir, thank you very much for the Prime sub. Much appreciated. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's upgrade our computers. And tier 6 modules, quantum supercomputer. I don't think that's going to work right now. And I wonder if, if I set this to supercomputer, tier 6 speed module, and then upgrade that now, it probably, yeah. Even if it changes what this machine is, the uh, item request slot should remain. Cool. Uh, so how much faster is it? Well, f but for the machines themselves, we're going from crafting speed 1 to 2. That alone puts it down to like 10 minutes. But then we're also going from... Oh wait, I need to wait till the spiders get here because we're going to have room for more modules as well. Uh, we're going to go from plus four... Plus 300% to... Uh... 50% more than that. Plus 450% from the beacon. And we're also going to get, we're going to go from plus 80 to plus 120, that's another 50%. So we're going to double, we're going to, I think it's going to be four times as fast. Let's see, crafting speed is 4.8. And crafting speed is 18.1. Uh, I, I was approximately correct. Um, I don't know where we went wrong, actually. But we're now looking at 14.48 extended energy catalog per second. Uh, 2,500 to go. Uh, less than three minutes before we get our... Not counting the train trip itself. Less than three minutes before we get our tier four energy science pack. Very exciting. Let's get back into orbit. Uh, Nervous Orbit, please. Launch. And I've thought of something that I will occasionally want to take down to Nervous in our ship. I don't think we really need more than 500 of these. And that would be energy beam receivers. Let's go for 10. Energy 
RNG beam receiver. I'll put a door on this thing, since it's obviously going to be a lot more efficient uh, to get me in and out of Alvis. Do we have doors? Yeah, we have doors. What's the integrity check look like? Hull stress probably won't creep up past container stress. Yeah, we're good. Fantastic. Um, and I think I'll stop... I already did stop requesting the rod modules in the old shuttle. But we are trying to bring them here, still. Why are we picking up seven? Oh, that's probably all we've got. For energy beam receivers. Yep. Oh. And then... Spiders are still on their way with the pipe. Do we need this pipe? Probably. Well, I'm not going to change it now. What else? Probably don't need that storage chest to be here right now. So I, I kind of want to wait and see the, uh, we're so close. I, I really want to witness the first Energy Science Pack 4 being built. This will be our first Tier 4 Energy Science Pack, uh, Tier 4 Science Pack of any kind for that matter. I kind of want to set, oh, that's right, I turned off the alert sounds. We've got a lot of spaceships engaged with the so-called enemy right now. Um, but the reason I don't turn the alert sounds back on is because fairly often we're destroying these chests. Especially right now. Uh, I could make an alarm system that's just going to flash notifications down here, but we've already got so many of them. What's this one? Oh, we're looking for prod modules for fuel. We somewhat solved our fuel issues. I hope we've solved our fuel issues. Um, we had to build a entire block for producing solid rocket fuel for that. But it actually, to my surprise, uh, seems to have caught up. And here I was thinking that I would have to go back to using cargo rockets. I'm very pleasantly surprised at this. Seven point five K What's our stack threshold? One seventy. Uh that doesn't oh. Wait, I think I meant for this to be one sixty. Uh one fifty rather. Yeah. Because if we're running low, we get exactly eight thousand of some data card. And because of the different lengths of the belt, we end up not making, like, two of those recipes at the end. 
and I would rather have the train pick up just a little bit less in this instance. Here it comes. Uh, so probably the other ones... I need to change that as well. Uh, I'm pretty sure... These combinators are going to be the same in all of these blocks. I just have to make sure I don't copy the train stops themselves. Uh, so where's the other ones? Energy science, catalogs. Oh, here's one. So that's bio 1 and 2. Bio 3 and 4. That's bio done. Uh, Astro 3 and 4. Astro 1 and 2, I think we did already. That's Astro. Energy 3 and 4. Energy 1 and 2. Where are you? Over here. And that just leaves mechanical. I, I keep calling it mechanical. Material. Uh, 3 and 4 and 1 and 2. Great, fantastic. Seeing catalogs saturated is kind of wild. That's a crazy factory, thank you. Mars, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, where's our train? Wait. Where is it taking those catalogs? I saw the train was coming to pick them up. Where did they go? Oh, I forgot about this. Oh no, 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 not this way. Not like this. Uh, I don't want the first... No, stop, stop. I don't want the first Energy 4 catalogs to go into that build. No thank you. Um... Please take them to Energy Science Pack 4 instead. Let's go here. No, that's not quite what I want. Uh, let's go here and then here. Do not wait at that temporary stop. Empty cargo. A Utbrot. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Come a long way. I remember the tiny sushi bus start. Indeed. We have indeed come a long way. This is... I mean, this is gigantic. This is pretty big. Should I set priorities on these? Nah, I, I just want the first one to go up there. I don't care if more of them come down here. Um, we also need to upgrade these. I think we've already got... let me check. I think the tier 2 computers can already handle the recipe. Yep. Extended energy insight. Let's go. And I just... I'm just changing the recipe this way so that we don't have to vomit out the input resources that were already there. Cool, cool, cool. So the next load will go here, I think, and we'll start making insights with the utmost efficiency. But for now... Oh, where's our train? What? Where, where did you... You're empty. Okay. Didn't you drop off 
Oh, you did. Here's the catalogs. Uh, we're missing cold thermofluid. That's a surprise. Don't these ones need cold thermofluid? And they've made thousands of items? This is absolutely the last problem I expected to run into right here. Uh, why don't we have cold thermofluid? I remember we had too much. Oh, this is cool thermofluid. But this... No, we've got plenty of... We've got plenty of cold thermofluid here. Yeah, we, we kind of have too much cool thermofluid, and I don't know what to do about it. Um... Oh! Oh, oh, oh. This is the problem. Um... Yeah, we're reading this entire thing and saying put more cool put more cold thermofluid in if we've got less than 1k. Wait, no. If anything If anything that would make this less inclined to put cool thermofluid in. So this needs to be basically empty before we pump cool thermofluid into this storage. So how on earth have we have we got this full on cool thermofluid? Um That's uh concerning. Anyway, we've got cold thermofluid. What are you making cool? Don't need, don't particularly need that right now. Hyper, hyper cooling thermofluid to negative 100 cold. Um, it seems to be going pretty quick. And it's bottlenecked by the output. Oh. Yeah, this is the way I had it set up. I messed up. Okay, cool. Good to know. Why don't we... No, I over it. So, apparently, I underestimated how much cold thermofluid would be coming back into the network. Not that I didn't try to keep this mostly empty. In fact, like, for both of these, I tried to keep them too empty. No, that's not right. This is the buffer. This is where trains drop stuff off and it all gets pumped into here. So that's actually working as intended. We want to keep this as empty as possible. So we've got 200k cold thermofluid here. We don't have a production problem. Provide threshold 100k. LTN knows that we've got it. So why... I am aware of the, um, the encoded network ID. The default is to attach to every other encoded network ID. Cold thermofluid, negative 100. I'm very confused as to how we got this delivered here before, and we haven't touched anything. And now it's not delivering it here. Request threshold 100k, cold thermofluid, negative 100, 120,000. And we've, we've definitely got less than 20,000 in these tanks. Is this going anywhere else? I can see the signal. We have three cold thermofluid. So why is... whoops. Why is this not delivering? Oh. Oh. Uh... Hmm. 
Okay. I see the problem. There is one obvious solution. It's a provider, it's also a requester. There are pumps from the train station into storage, yes. It's worked before, um, but I think I must have... Yeah, I haven't come up with a good solution whereby I want to use this train station for long trains for fluid, but short trains for... Um, just this one steel chest. I mean, it won't be a tragedy if a long train picks this up. It's all going to... Where is it? It's all going to the science drop-off, which will handle any kind of input. So I could just make this one accept long trains. Um... Are we still not getting a train? Minimum. Let's just go minimum train length 3, maximum train length 6. I thought I changed it so that this thing with, that has the cold thermo fluid would accept a short train. Yeah, I did. Where is it going? It is going here. It's just, I don't think the light went yellow. Oh. Did this just happen? Like the second I looked away? Okay. How long does 25k thermofluid last here, anyway? Uh, 278. Only 90 seconds if all of this was going full speed. Yeah, the only thing I can think of that would allow us to have the request threshold, minimum train length 6, and the provide threshold, uh, train length 3, is if I were to have a timer that cycled between reporting the signals for requester and the reporting the signals for provider. And I don't particularly want to do that. I definitely could do that. Oh, we've got two trains coming in. Wait, I thought that short train was coming here. Where was the short train going? Well, we got our cold thermo fluid anyway. And... There it is. Our first... Tier 4 science. It's so beautiful. Here it comes. Into the rail network with you. I did mention it before, but we're probably going to get to the point where one stack inserter isn't good enough here when we go fast. Hey, Depto. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, forgot to mention that before, sorry. Okay, so what's our threshold? Five stacks. So once we have a thousand energy for, it's going to trigger an automatic delivery. How much do we need for our first? 400 for this, 200 for this. I don't mind waiting for the delivery. Okay, we have Astro 4. Uh, not Astro 4, I was going to say Energy 4, but what about Astro 4 is the next thing I was going to say. Uh, this thing needs to accept long trains to make sure we get the cold thermofluid, I suppose. 
currently dropping in some more tier 1. Extended Astro Catalog has not arrived yet. We... We don't have any. Okay. Uh, I don't think we've ever received the Asteroid Belt Probe data yet. Um, where am I looking? We've got 22,000 waiting to be delivered. Should we send it early? I think we should send it early. Are you not taking off? There we go. Fantastic. Why is this one not automatically landing? Uh, you've got power. Destination is Calidus Asteroid Belt 1. At destination, clamp signal. Do I need to force you to land just once? Oh, the clamps are wrong. Negative two. Wait, I'll change this one first. And negative two. No. Negative two, negative two. There we go. And I'll just double check that last ship is set up the same way. Negative two, negative two. Okay, cool. Nice. So in about four minutes, we should have uh, the beginnings of Astro 4. Well, not the beginnings, the beginning of the end. The beginning of completion of Astro 4. And I'm not as concerned about... Um, the Astro 4 catalogs getting to the final science machine as quickly. So I'll do this now. And that actually means we're halfway done with the last two... Well, not the last two, there's also deep space science, but of the four so-called basic space sciences... I don't know if basic is the right word. The, the four general space sciences? I don't know. The main four space sciences, we've got just two to go for the tier fours. Uh, I don't think we've done any of the tier four cards for material or bio. And I don't know which one we want to do first. Electrical shielding data. Laser shielding data. Particle beam shielding data. We need space platform plating. That's a bit of a surprise. Uh, I think I had a little bit of that made in the mall. Yeah, we've got like a whopping 202 here. What does it actually take to make it? Uh, heavy girder, space platform scaffold, and steel. Come to think of it, heat shield, LDS steel. Well, it's way more stack efficient if we send this up from Nalvis. As... Come to think of it, it's way more efficient if we send up the space platform plating as well. Hmm... 
Okay. I guess I'll make a build for that on Nervous. Uh, so that's three solids, one fluid, three solids out. Well, two solids out, and it recycles Iridium Plate. I quite like what I've settled on lately for recycled materials. Um, we just put a chest in between two machines, filter the outputs that get recycled into this chest, and the inserter that takes from the belt does not pick up whatever's already in the chest. much better than... I mean, it's a lot of chests and inserters, especially for this particular build. Not not as much for the space builds, but on the other hand, we don't have to filter even more output belts and have them loop around and stuff. I like this more. So... Do I want to do... Bio 4 first, or Material 4 first? I think a lot of these are just going to require both when it comes down to it. Um, let's see. Bioscience 4 gives us the, the usual upgrades, including lab productivity. Uh, mining productivity? That's a pretty big deal. It's also very expensive. But obviously it's going to pay for itself. And it does become an infinite research eventually. Uh, what else was I looking at here? Plague rocket... Nano material needs everything. So it just gets it, it sort of just gets worse and worse the further in you get that like one particular type of the next tier of science isn't gonna be that exciting and you need all of them at once. Uh, Besmod, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And Astroscience. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. I meant to look at Material Science, but this is, this is it. Uh, this one is exciting. Okay, cool. Uh, Material Science Pack 4 and Astro 4, we can start playing with Naquium. That is what I want. Better heat pipes. We can make a really, really big reactor with just one energy beam receiver for one thing. It also opens up some very interesting possibilities with spaceships. This needs bio. Uh, what was I looking at? Material. Heavy assembly is needed for this other stuff that needs everything anyway. Not too excited about that yet. Uh, yeah, it's mostly just Naquium processing. <laughs> um, okay, but I've made my decision. Excuse me. We'll we'll finish material first. Arcosphere's ahead. Yeah, that is exciting. Uh, Chucky, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay, uh, I think... I think we'll just put material... Well, we've already got a block up here. Let's use that. And which material... Should we do first? Probably not the one that needs space platform plating. Three physical, one fluid, particle, a collider. 
thermodynamics facility, laser facility, electromag facility. Electromag is the same shape as these ones, right? Electromagnetic facility. Yeah, it's the same size. It has two float in, two float out. If we're lucky, we can do a familiar layout for some of these. Uh, we can't recycle. Well, we can, but we'll need to alter it a little bit with that build. Actually, we do have some recycling with these builds, where we loop the belt back up. I don't like that nearly as much as just the direct swapping approach. Uh, so both of these recycle iridium plate. Both of these have three solids in, one fluid in, contaminated scrap, iridium plate, and data out. Uh, this one outputs thermofluid as well. Other than that, they're basically going to be the same. 5 seconds versus 10 seconds as well. Don't necessarily care about that. What's this? Experimental alloys data. Iron, copper, beryllium plate, holmium plate, iridium plate, and blank data cards. And it's actually a reliable recipe. 6 experimental alloys data and 5 scrap. Six physical inputs, you say. I'm tempted to just use bots for this. We can do four physical inputs from one train station quite casually. Oh, well, it's 18 seconds. It's going to be kind of slow. Let's see what it looks like rate-wise. So we need thermodynamics facilities. I feel like starting from scratch this time. I'll probably end up with, like, the exact same thing, though. Actually, no, with six physical inputs, it's definitely going to be different from our legacy layouts. Uh, so we need some... That's not the screen I'm looking for. We need some beacon. We need to potentially fit as many of these around it as we can. If we are to use belts, we'll need at least three. Well, we will need three. I'm pretty sure the items individually are going to be quite slow. Um, so if we go with underground belts here, that's one. Well, we might continue down here. Uh, if we go for underground belts there, that's one. If we go for these belts, like so, that's two. And then maybe like this. And that's three. Tidy that up a bit, maybe an underground here. Or maybe even something like this. Alright, 
what's the recipe again? Uh, experimental alloys data. And give it some modules. I don't have the thermo facility included just yet. So how fast would this be with eight machines, I wonder? Oh! Oh, that's so much faster than I was expecting. Uh, the recipe takes 18 seconds, and yet... Uh, two per second for each input, except for blank data cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's 12 per second blank data cards for each machine, which puts us way over half a belt for blank data cards. Uh, we could have blank data cards coming in like this. This is really getting out of hand. I am strongly leaning towards just using bots for this. Alternatively, we could use direct insertion. Um, we've used direct insertion for really high throughput outputs, like these uh, recipes that create 1.5k scrap. Um, isn't the output going to be... It was 90-something per second for the output, wasn't it? I don't think we're going to need a whole lot of machines to keep up with the other blocks. 96. Oh, and 80 scrap per second. Cool. So we need really quite massive... Um, throughput on both ends. I think I'll swap in some efficiency modules this time. Um, so we're going to go for... I think it's seven... efficiency sixes. which should give us the minimum power consumption while keeping as much speed as possible. Why are the sp why why are the bots not do, do you not have Why don't you have efficiency modules? Um I could send them back up here to pick some up. But the efficiency modules won't affect the speed calculation. Okay, so we're looking at less than two belts of each. 70 data cards per second is insane. I think this is going to be the entire build. Um, we're not going to need more than that. So what I have in mind is a little bit like this, but with different chests for different resources. In fact, can't exactly copy-paste this because the buildings are a different size. How well would this fit? We're obviously not fitting that up there. Um, can we put some train stations in, please? Let me just update these. Really should update my blueprints. Uh, Questa station. And I'm thinking... We can actually... 
very naturally line up, each of these with one cargo wagon. Just barely. Oh, uh, move it down a couple of tiles because we need chests. Take care, Whiskers. Thanks for hanging out. Have a good night. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six inputs. That's actually perfect. Or rather, it would be, except... Hmm. I actually think instead of having a dedicated chest for each resource, we should just put everything into all of the chests, oddly enough. I can't exactly whitelist um, six different resources on the uh, on the stack filter inserter. But what I can do is connect some wire across here, and if we get a signal from here, we know that there's an LTN train stopped here. Like, even if I manually send a train to this station, I think if there isn't an LTN schedule, we're not going to get a signal from this, possibly. So if anything, if any signal is detected... From the LTN train stop output, then we'll allow these inserters to do their thing. And we want, I guess, one train load of everything. Uh, we can fit 7.2 train loads of stuff in 24 chests. So, if we just ask for, let's see, uh, 6 times 1.2, that's actually exactly full. I'm not going to fly cl that close to the sun. Uh, let's say if we're down to 10% of a train load, we'll send another train. Except, at the rate we're consuming stuff... Um, 35 blank data cards per second. And we're down to 800 blank data cards. We've got 22 seconds to get another train in here, if this is going to go full speed. That's obviously not going to work. We could simply add another row of chests, and I th think that's actually what I want to do. So now we've got 14.4 chests of storage here. Oh. Yeah, I built this from scratch, so we don't even have that connected yet. And we could even add more rows if we want to. Uh, so, request stack threshold 160, minimum train length 6. Uh, train limit, I'm going to go for 6. We've got 6 different resources. And the throughput for some of them is going to be, or at least one of them, is going to be high. Um, so, let's see. Iron, copper, beryllium. Iron... Actually, it's all plate, isn't it? Except for the blank data cards. Let's go searching for plate. Iron. Uh, I'll aim for, let's say, one and a half train loads of each. 
We've got room for more than two, so that shouldn't cause any problems. So 24,000. Uh, beryllium plate stacks to 200, so that's 48,000. Holmium is 100. And iridium is awkward, it's 40. So... Uh... 160 plus 80 to 40 stacks is 9,600. I think, considering it's going to be consumed at the same rate, we could probably ask for a bit more Iridium Plate. So, maybe two train loads? And I think that is 6,400 times 2, uh, 12,800. Yes. Yes, it is. Last but not least, very not least, in fact, is blank data cards at 35.2 per second. Um... That's a lot. And we're just gonna go for, let's say, two train loads. So that is two, four train loads. Uh, 1 1.5, 1 1.5, that is three, that is six. Six, seven, eight. 9, 10 train loads, and we can fit 14.4, so that shouldn't cause any issues. Okay, what about the output? Uh, I think I would like to bring this all the way down here, and we could have the output station here, hopefully. I don't think it's... this is an odd number, isn't it? It's not going to line up the way we want to for direct insertion. Yeah, no. Don't necessarily need that many chests anyway. Uh, 35 per second plus 30 per second. How fast are they individually? 8.8 and 7.3. Less than one stack inserter, but long arm inserters. We're looking at more than. T we're looking at three for each of them. I could see myself just doing six long arm inserters for each, except we can't filter long arm inserters. Oh, and if we're going to output this to the same station, we do need the precise loading stuff. I think I just won't bother with that this time. Um... Amazed at the scope you are building at, my build aim for 04 of each signs, thus usually 04 of each card. Oh, 0 0.4. Totally different designs, plans, layout, etc. I like it. Indeed. That's one of the fun things about Factorio. Like, everyone you watch play it does things a bit differently, or a lot differently. And they're not wrong, either. Um, 
I guess I'll just have to use some belts here. So let's go for... how many inserters do we need? If it was direct insertion, which it's not, we would only need a third of a stack inserter to keep with, to keep up with either of these resources. Um, but because it's putting it on the on the belt, we probably need a couple for each resource. So let's go with one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And final product. Experimental alloy data goes here. And was it scrap? Regular scrap. Goes here. Or maybe not there exactly because I'm going to want to use both sides of the belt. How close can we put a station and make this work? I think I do want to use a precise loader circuit for this. Nah, we've got so much space. Let's not. Can we put a station here? And a station here, perhaps? Maybe that's too close. No, that's fine, actually. I need the cargo wagon to be straight, if possible. And then... I guess that can go there. And then... This as close to the intersection as we can. This is actually going to be a pickup station. Uh, that's a problem. Maybe we don't need 24 inserters for this. Uh, 29 scrap per second? Yeah. Let's go for... Let's say... 4 inserters per cargo wagon. And just for the symmetry of it, we'll do that over here as well. Come to think of it, those won't... Well, those will need to be stack inserters. Uh, I think I didn't leave quite enough space here. Chest goes here, inserter, belt. Okay, we're actually... There's actually just enough room. What is there? Uh, technically, we don't need to rebalance this, but in practice, when we shouldn't have to rebalance somewhere, and we don't rebalance in at least one place, uh, we tend to run into problems. I can't put this here, unfortunately. Wait, yes I can. That's going to go on that side. We're going to push all of it to the left. And then that's going to be teleported up here. 
and it's going to go in there. Oh. Uh, there still isn't room because space belts only have a reach of five. Also, this one wouldn't have been able to... Yeah, no. Uh, I think we just need to make more room. I'll move this... Uh, I'll move this whole arrangement down a bit. And we can have the beacon between the tracks. I think. Okay, so if this goes here, what are we... what's in the way? If this goes here... That can go there... Cargo wagon's going to be slightly bent, but it'll work. That's the main thing. How am I going to do this, actually? Say this crosses over here. And then we've got the scrap belt. And these two. That's not going to fit. But we can make it fit. I'm pretty sure. I do want to merge and split with these two. Could we have the scrap... Actually... Go through here... Priority left, swap the side of the belt. And then go over here. That works. Yeah, that works well. loader for this. Our beacon is able to reach all of the machines. We could have put it here, I guess, but it would have looked a bit more awkward. Then again, the rail might look a bit more awkward. Um... This one actually, I think, is going to look the same, or better. Okay, so that goes there. And... This goes down here. Just for consistency. Oh, that looks kind of weird either way. Yeah, that's... I don't think... I don't think I can make that part look good. Let's just do this, I feel like it's more consistent. 
and we're going to need a arithmetic company to, whoops, 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 uh, make these wires, we have 16 chests, each divided by 16, uh, negative 16, gives us the negative average, uh, and these combinators are going to read, sorry, these inserters are going to read the positive amount of what's in the chest, minus the average, and if everything is equal to, less than or equal to zero, uh, we're going to know that we are at or below average. And we can pick this up. Oh. So that's our experimental alloys data build in less than a quarter of a block. Um, I just want to name the station. So it was iron, copper, uh, beryllium plate, iridium, holmium plate, ber iridium plate, and blank data card, if I recall. One, two, three, four, five, six. And nailed it. Blue Lightning, thank you very much for the sub. Five months, much appreciated. Thank you, thank you. And are we ready to switch this on? Oh, you're kidding. Uh, well then. I could put a constant combinator between them. I don't want to resort to like a power pole. How about this? I could use the same jumping off point if I was using opposite wire colors on this one, but we won't need to do that. That looks a little bit tacky. Not gonna lie. How about a pylon? <laughs> Zonix agrees. Welcome, welcome, Zonix. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Oh, I made the same mistake that I just mentioned. I kind of do want to swap the wire colors on this one. Green wire, red wire. Green wire. Green wire connecting these as well. Oh. Oh. I messed up. Uh, how fast can I remove these? I need to double click on each of them. It's kind of awkward. Okay, so red wire is reading from the chests. That was kind of the whole point. That way these two don't cross-contaminate. I could also have, like, added a negative 
without a request threshold, I could have added a negative to each of these constant combinators to tell it that actually we have, like, no scrap or no cards at each of those stations. Alright, so... Experimental data card provider... Uh, this should actually be a purple. High priority to get rid of this, otherwise... Um, otherwise something else stops. Uh, scrap. Cool. I think that's the whole build. Except for some efficiency modules. Which really we're not in dire need of right now. Let's uh, switch it on and see what happens. Oh, we've already got four trains coming in. That was pretty quick. Uh, I kind of expected it, but I'm not seeing blank data cards yet. That is the number one thing I expected to be short on. There's never enough blank data cards. I don't see these machines going. Not enough polished, so this just started again. Alright, so how is it we don't have tier 4 energy science research happening just... Oh! Did we catch it in the act? Nope, that's energy science pack 2. Why are we now picking up Energy Science Pack 2? That is pretty weird, actually. How much... How much do we have here? Energy Science Pack 2, we're looking for 2,000. And we have 32,000. What... Where, where are you taking, what, I think something is busted. We're reading the logistic network contents. We've got 32,000 energy science pack twos. Our request for Energy Science Pack 2 is only 2,000. Um... What? How much blank cards do you get from junk cards, and are you on 70% or 90% return? Uh, junk cards... We technically have the technology to go to the next tier, but it's a bit expensive to set up. We're on uh, quantum supercomputers. We've got 80% recycling rate. But obviously it might be worth the trouble, even if it's a bit slow to set up right now, to go to... We need a hundred by... Oh my goodness. Yeah, I knew there was a reason I hadn't done this yet. A thousand processing units. Uh, so we need... Three train loads of blue circuits. To upgrade all of these. Not to mention... Uh, a whole lot of bioelectric data. Superconduct. I, I also haven't made advanced neural gel yet. Lol, yes, good luck, indeed. Um, and good luck figuring out why this train is delivering energy science pack to you. Why is it coming down here? Oh. Uh, oh. Well, that's, um, I don't remember that. What is this? Have we just been going for 48k of everything, even after I changed the 
quests. Down to 2,000. Well, there's your problem. Podcast with slides. Okay. Uh, but how many energy science pack 4 do we have? 440, it looks like. 440. It'll auto-deliver at 1,000. So it is working. It's just uh, taking its sweet time and consuming a lot of resources to get there. What are we bottlenecked on? We've actually got... So we're... We're not picking up Holmium cable fast enough. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean... The tier 6 speed modules in everything. We're not picking up Holmium cable fast enough. But still, um... We are bottlenecking on energy science too. I could fit... I could fit a couple more inserters here quite easily. Send the construction spiders. Actually, I'll send myself because speedy spider and I'm closer and I don't need to move my construction spiders away from there for two inserters. Do I have space belt though? I do have space belt. Oh, here we go. Iron plate. Fantastic. Make sure that's all... Oh. Oh. Very important, especially with this build. Make sure that we're telling LTN how much we've already got, especially considering I set the train limit to six. We might already be receiving too much copper or iron or something. Uh, I believe this is, yeah, this would be our third train of iron. Oh. No, that was the second one. Okay, it's fine. It'll sort itself out. Uh, beryllium. That's good. Iridium. That's good. Copper. That's fine. And holmium. Wait, I think I read holmium as beryllium. No, that's beryllium. Okay, as long as we don't run out of space before we put in the final ingredient, that'll be okay. Third matching scrap output? Third matching scrap output. Oh, tree. Thank you. Third machine, yes. Fantastic. So I'm pretty sure that's done. Let's head back to the mall. And I'll add a tag here for uh, experimental alloys data. So that is one quarter of material for theoretically complete. I need to build scaffolding. I kind of want to get rid of the scaffolding build up here from the old main bus. So this could be an opportunity. Um, why don't we build our scaffolding build right next to where it all gets delivered to? Oh, I forgot about this. Well, we're not seeing a traffic jam here. Hold on. I want this as well. Spiders. Pick up that bot before you go. Back to the mall. 
this is technically the mall right now. What is this? Literally nothing. Cool. And this is evidently working. Fantastic. Where are you going? You're leaving. I can't find the train that is trying to go here. There's a lot of them queuing up, actually. It's fine. How's our Holmium cable input looking now? We're bottlenecking on Energy Science 1. That is what I would prefer to see. And this is no doubt bottlenecking on Holmium plate. Um, I can easily get it to three inserters. It's not enough. It is enough. The output isn't being all taken. I think that'll be okay for now. And we could always move this over here if we want to. There's really no need to speed this up this much. I'm just impatient for our energy science for a Sigma B, El Pancho. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, okay. Let's go back to the mall for now, I think. And what was I about to do? Oh yeah, on Nalvis. Uh, I am wanting a new build for scaffolding. And we're going to take the scaffolding and immediately turn it into uh, space platform plating. Because we need that. And it's more cargo efficient to send this into space. Wowza, this is an impressive setup you got. Curious, how are you handling the thermo fluids? Uh, mostly, so at our separate rail blocks, we have thermo fluid in, thermo fluid out. It's very neat the city block design for this purpose. Um, but the thermo fluid block itself, we start with our machine that makes 25 degree thermo fluid. It's going to have a lot of work to do at first, but after a while it pretty much sits idle for the entire game. Uh, we store 25 degree thermo fluid here, but we actually want to keep that very close to empty so that uh, trains can come back here and drop off 25 degree thermofluid. The 25 degree thermofluid goes into thermal radiators, which make the cold thermofluid, sorry, cool thermofluid, negative 10, which of course goes to these ones, making negative 100. Plus 25, the 25 gets sent back up here. And so on for negative 100 down to negative 275. The uh, negative 100 goes here. And just like we did up here, we're trying to keep this one pretty much empty. But we immediately pump that into our cold thermofluid output here. And our negative 10 degrees um, gets pumped in here. Hmm. I'll finish explaining it and then I'll have a look at this, which I may have figured out something. Uh, our cool thermofluid gets pumped here. We try to keep that empty so that trains can drop it off. Uh, we try to keep this empty so that trains can drop it off. 
and we pump our cool thermo fluid into our pickup station here. With LTN, we receive a negative signal when the train is trying to drop off everything, and we receive a positive signal when it's trying to pick up something. So that way we can have pumps for the different resources pointed at the same station. And then obviously for negative 273 degree thermofluid, we never, we never need to bring that back, so we just output that here. Just started messing with LTN. There's a learning curve, but there's a lot you can do with it that you can't do otherwise. Data no, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And gentle hedgehog, welcome, welcome. Also, good to see you both again. Um, so what I think I just noticed. Let's see. When we hypercool to negative a hundred, we get negative. No, we get negative a hundred and we get twenty-five. Just like we get supercooled thermofluid and 25. So... So the negative 10 degree, which we don't want to overproduce... Yeah, we just have to block off this pump. And we still ended up with this alarmingly full... We can't actually drop off negative 10 degree thermofluid right now. Um, I'm not entirely sure what to do about that. I mean, I could set this thing to cool thermofluid has to be less than, like, 10. It wouldn't make any difference at the moment. I suspect somewhere out there they're if there isn't already, there's likely to be a train station that can't get rid of cold thermofluid soon. Uh, I don't remember where they are, though, and where to look for them. For a little while there, we were doing these ugly builds because we only had the 25 degree thermofluid recycling. So this outputs... Uh, negative 10 degree, and then we turn that into negative 100, negative 273, which is the input here, and then finally the 25 degree gets sent over this way. Um, but I don't like having to do this pipe spaghetti. That's why we changed our, the way we are handling our thermofluid to have rail network recycling for all three of these. I think I just... I don't like having to do this, but I think I just need to... add in... a bit more storage for the cold thermofluid, because by the time we did this, I guess there was... No, I think we built this first, before... before we made any pickup stations to recycle this stuff. But why is it working for cold thermofluid but not negative 10? Do we actually have any stations that output cold thermofluid as a side product. Negative 10, 25, 25, 25, nothing, 25, negative 10. Surely there's at least one station that outputs negative 100. Maybe there isn't. No, I think I remember looking at FNEI to make sure. 
bioscience doesn't... Oh, here we go. Negative 10. There's just so many that output negative 10. The way it's set up now looks a lot cleaner slash easier to troubleshoot. Yeah. It might even... I fear it might get to the point where we need to do this, but for negative 10 degree thermofluid. Look at all that bio sludge. This is ridiculous. Eleven K times seven hundred and sixty eight. Uh we're looking at eight point four million bio sludge here. Good grief. But I think it did stabilize. I think we actually did have the right settings for um, priority systems for where we consume our bio sludge from. Um, it it just got to the point of having that much bio sludge. Why? <laughs> Why? I don't know. So okay, look here's our here's our first build of bio in the rail network. Um, we produce our initial bit of bio sludge here, and we have a tank which we keep mostly empty. If it goes above 5k we don't put, we don't produce any more bio sludge. We have a station up here to drop off bio sludge that's come back to us, and it pumps it back down this way. And finally, we have a station to pick up the bio sludge. And we have some encoded network IDs so that we don't have the rail system sending that in a loop. Um, we also eventually made a dedicated block for building, for making bio sludge. But we've set the priority to pick this up as negative a million, so it's absolutely the last resort. Um, this one is also negative priority to pick up, uh, negative 100. So, uh, we've got it set up as a much higher priority to take bio sludge from, uh, from here. A thousand priority when we get bio sludge from contaminated whatever, contaminated bio sludge. And for the longest time, I thought I must have done something wrong with all of that. But no, it's actually just the sheer volume of bio sludge we ended up with in various places, somehow. Um, at first, I thought when I built this and I saw how quickly it was filling up that, oh, nope, that there's still a problem somewhere. We're net producing bio sludge, but no, it finally settled down to half fill this thing. Use it for neural gel production. Uh, we have to, we do. Advanced neural gel. Yeah, I actually actively looked for a sink for bio sludge, but I didn't find one. Okay. Oh, how are we still waiting on our sides? I'm surprised how long this is taking. What's the rate between these two? It's actually exactly one to one. So if this goes full speed, this goes full speed, this goes full speed, and so on. But you would think this machine would be idle a lot less if we're seeing these ones moving. Oh, we need a balancer for these two. Let's head over there.
I also don't think these three inserters are going to be enough. But that's fine. For now. What have we got? Uh, 776. We're getting close to our first automatic pickup. Which will give us, like, almost the first three sciences here. At this rate, we're going to almost have asteroid science before we get that. Where is our asteroid belt data? Uh, we don't have any here? Really? What are the odds of that? Uh... Okay, how are we at exactly zero? of this asteroid belt data. Oh, I think I understand. We're just waiting that long for our first automat... Okay, something might be wrong. We've only got 20 asteroid belt probes. 21, 22. This is surprisingly slow. Um... Yeah, I kind of forgot to put speed modules in. That said, the inserters can't keep up. That is a lot of blank data cards per recipe. Oh, we're not even going to get there. Yes, we just barely are going to get there. Okay. But we got our... Uh, data, right? Asteroid belt probe data. Fantastic. Products finished. Zero. You're kidding. We never actually got... Um, dark energy data? Wait, did I not build it yet? You're kidding. Dark energy data. Astro negative. And it outputs blank and junk. I don't remember this one. Whoops. Wait, don't tell me I did zero energy twice. Zero energy point... I I built zero energy point data twice. Uh, well, that second build is a lot cleaner looking. I'm going to switch this off. And we'll drain that when the time comes. Whoopsie, indeed. Yeah, no wonder I thought it was done, because we've got one, two, three blocks making tier four data cards, and then the fourth one is the belt probe data. Um, I could just send the spiders to clean all this up. I think I do want this block to be dark energy data. That's okay, twice zero point energy is still zero point energy. Perfect. Oh, we've got so much. So much zero point energy data. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm just going to leave that there. Why don't we build another block here? Until the existing zero point energy data is drained at the very least. And I'll set this priority pickup to the maximum. Okay. That moment when you accidentally build uh, like 60,000 extra
of a particular type of card. Where are our spiders? Oh, that's right. I had to make more room for cold. Uh, cool thermo fluid. Does that leave enough room for trains to drop stuff off? No. I think there's still just a lot more cool thermo fluid out there. Because I specifically changed this. Um, so it drops off more. Like, the way we've got this set up is we're just looking at these tanks. And I set it so that we're looking for 180k cold, cool thermo, cold thermo fluid. And then when I was trying to fix this one, I changed it to look at all of the tanks. And I set the request much higher. Um, 780k. So this is 39 tanks. 975,000. Normally, I would leave a bit of a gap. But I want to be sure. If we start seeing some trains dropping off here, yep. There's cool thermo fluid out there somewhere that needs to be recycled. Hey, Sifa Cat. Thanks for the raid. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, S-O. There we go. How was your stream today? Factorio. Good, good. Why did our spiders stop? That's the last place I want them to stop. Also, we need our scaffolding spiders over here. Raid, indeed. Uh, so where are we right now? Energy 4 is coming. Astro 4... We never actually finished, because we accidentally did uh, zero-point energy data twice. On the plus side, the second build is much, much, much cleaner. Oh. Oh, here's a good example. Uh, zero point energy data actually stopped in the new block because there's nowhere for cool thermo fluid to go. Um, yeah. Maybe this is actually the way to go. I don't like it though. Nah, we just need... I'm pretty sure we just need more storage. Cool thermo fluid. I would be surprised if those uh, 21 tanks made the difference. We could actually add a few more here without any issue. I don't want to have to make a block like this for cool thermo fluid. I really don't. But who knows, maybe it'll come to that. Spider's doing the splits. Fantastic. Where am I right now? That's right, I was fixing... I was pushing the bottlenecks for energy signs. I think I really do want to see um, four inserters for this. So let's move this. And I guess I could put this here. back 
and then we can have as many stack inserters as we like. Um, or the Holmium plate. Still not enough. Seriously. That's almost perfect. I can live with it. I'm not going to eight stack inserters for this. Not until the end game, maybe. Now this is actually keeping up now. I wonder why it took so long to figure it out. We actually fell behind on significant data. We shouldn't have, but the inserter likes to switch between focusing on one resource and then focusing on the other, it seems like. It'll try to get energy insight super overfilled and then it'll try and do significant data. But this should be enough. Whatever you do, don't mix the two. The world is not ready for a frozen bio-sludge moon. <laughs> what if... Just a little as a treat. I love when ship launches and I'm there to hear it. But being too close is scary. I'm surprised... It's surprising to sh see a ship disappear. Indeed. Or to have three ships appear right next to each other when you thought you were just landing one and then it makes them take off automatically in about four seconds. Oh, this isn't output prioritizing. There we go. Uh, why are we putting this on the belt? Because... Wait, what? Did I set this up wrong? If Energy Science Pack 1 is less than Energy Science Pack 2... Energy Science Pack 2 is at 1.8k. Alright, fair enough. Oh. Oh no. At this rate, we're going to run out of space to get to 1k. Okay, we've already got the fifth stack reserved for Energy Science Pack 4, but in theory, would it be possible to run out of space for one resource or the other here? Um, let's revise this. So, Energy Science Pack 4 is, of course, unconditional. That goes on the belt every time. Energy Science Pack 3 has to be less than or equal to Energy Science Pack 4 before it goes on the belt. Apparently that condition has been met. We've got... No? What? We've got 896 of Energy Science Pack 4. 3 has to be less than or equal to 4. And apparently... 2.4k. Am I reading this wrong? Three less than or equal to four. Enable disable. I'm seeing 
2.4k for 3, and 896 for 4. Oh, no. What's this? Oh, I forgot about this. Okay, I think we found the problem. Because we didn't have tier 4 being produced before, we had to pretend we have an infinite supply of it. Well, there's your problem. And that means because we've been producing all of these 3s, we continue pr to produce 2s, we continue to produce 1s. Okay. Um, is this going fi to fix itself, or do I need to intervene? We're still producing twos because we've got 2.5k threes. Um, let's say we have 2.5k of everything. That is... Well, 2.6k divided by 200 is 13 stacks for three of these. 39 stacks, which leaves us... Uh, nine stacks for Astro Science, uh, Energy Science 4, which is more than enough to trigger a delivery. So this will sort itself out. I th think. Yes. Yes, it will. It's going to cause us to waste an awful lot of time making the lower tier sciences, though. Although, fortunately, it turns out Energy Science Pack 4 blocks Energy Science Pack 1 with the shape of this belt. Um, this right here is going to... We, we saw it in motion a second ago, but the inserter prefers to pick up from the right side, it looks like. Oh, I, we just missed it. C could you... Could you stop that, please? For the moment. Yep, there it is. Energy Science Pack 4 has priority. Implicitly. What's this? What's this? There's something very wrong here. What's this? There's people singing songs? Indeed. Someone should write a song about how you have to keep running around fixing things in Factorio. Alright, I think we can leave that to its own devices now. Um, how much have we got? 920. We're getting so close to the first automatic pickup of Energy Science 4. A song from Nightmare Before Christmas. Nice. Uh, let's do our... Uh, Dark Energy Data build, which we completely forgot before. So, first things first. We need two physical and one fluid input, and the crafting time is slow. So it's probably going to be a pretty straightforward build. Gravimetrics facility, we have a build or two with those. So we know how to... Well, it's not going to be this shape. But I think we can manage. We need a fluid. We could bring that in from the side somewhere quite easily. This one... Oh, that's right. Gravitational lensing data turned out to be really slow. This is 20 seconds. This one's 30. We only get dark energy 70% of the time. So it's even worse than this one. So I think we will start by copying this build. Actually, 
switch this off so we don't get the requests. Switch that back on. And paste. Now we just need to shape this so that we have shared belts. Um, I'll just check the input speed as well. Dark energy data. Let's make sure we get all of them. And... Are we missing some modules? I think we are. Let's send the spiders back. What are you building? Fantastic. I'll have the spiders dance around and build some rail. And then... Up here is actually the best place to pick up modules. Have you run all space slash deep space scans, or are there some left to research? Space slash deep space scans? I thought this was just a infinite research. Or does it stop me from doing it? Are there a finite number of things that I can find? I mean, I would imagine there's a finite number of things I can find in the local cluster, whatever you want to call it. But is it going to I guess it has to tell me that at some point. So yeah, we haven't discovered everything yet. But we're getting diminishing returns in terms of finding what we're looking for. Um, Alright, I'm going to take a short break. I'll leave you with some uh, screensaver. Yes, it will say it when it stops discovering new things. Okay. Uh, back in a few minutes.
Thank you, Valdek. Alright, let's continue, shall we? Uh, scaffolding spiders. We'll probably go back for now. And... What else? Uh, I need to figure out how I'm going to fit a shared belt. Well, do I need this shape in particular? Kind of. We've got not all the modules in, so 128 times this is only 28 per second. Uh, it also recycles 36 blank data cards. Wait, what? What is this recipe? We get one blank data card back every time. Well, that's nice. For a change. And whenever we fail to get dark energy data, we get junk data. Okay. Um, what was the rate between uh, 32 of these? We're looking at less than half a belt. And for 64, still less than half a belt. Okay, I think that'll do. Can we fit... I don't know if we can. We're looking for astrometric and negative pressure. So it's going to look like this. And then we only need one belt for all of this to merge into. This is going to look a little weird, but I think it's okay. In fact, it's actually pretty easy. Surprisingly easy. We just need to merge it this way because we have to preserve uh, which side of the belt things are on. Oh, that was shockingly easy, actually. Uh, let's do some stack inserters. And we need to read from this belt as well. Read hand contents hold, and everything has to be equal to... Well, no, we need to be specific here. Uh, negative pressure data equals zero. And on this side, uh, astrometric data equals zero. Oops. And then we need to connect the wires for all of these. And that's it. Shockingly easy. Uh, let's remove these and put this in here. I think. Yes. And we also need super cool thermo fluid, which oh. There's fluid output as well. Is this going to be a problem? I think it's only going to be an issue here. 
if at all. Don't tell me I need to rotate all of these by hand. Hmm. I think, uh, I think I would rather do this. Actually, before we do, let's do the piping. Uh, what's the easiest way to do this? I'm thinking... One of these. And a snap to grid relative. This part's not actually going to be a problem at all. Very convenient. Uh, in fact, I'll keep going with that blueprint. It's easy enough to do it this way. A little bit faster, please. This needs to go here. Output on the output side. Just to keep things simple. And how fast would we consume thermo fluid? Probably quite slowly. Only 386 per second. Wait, did I look at the right thing? Uh, hold up. I'm doing the wrong multiplier. Um, 128, 128, 386 per second. The beacon got in the way of the pipes? Uh-oh. Uh, that's a problem. But it is a problem we can solve with relative ease. Yeah, I think that's probably how we're going to do it. Is it going to look the same over here? Yep. Oh, that's not the whole story. Um, I thought that looked weird. Okay, it does happen to line up with the same inserters, so that makes it easy. Fantastic. Um, can we just flip this around? Yes, indeed. Nice. And I want these connected here in any case. this side. Uh, 
Those should all connect. Okay, so we're going to have, let's say, 275 degree thermofluid drop off here, and 25 degree thermofluid pick up here. Missing underground by beacon. Missing underground by beacon. Oh, underground belt. Right? As opposed to pipe. Fantastic. One below, indeed. Uh, Sleepy Dove, I am freaky. Thanks for pointing those out. And let's get our spiders back with their modules. Uh, I also want them to pick up some rail or something, just in case. They've probably got enough, though. Alright, please go this way. And over here. That should get all of that built. I want a requester station right about here, and a active pickup. Oh, uh, it's going to have to be on this side. I can live with that. Right about here. Okay, so I can't quite see where the tanks are going to go. Let me steal a 275 degree requester from here, perhaps? I'm not going to... No, let me make sure I clean this up first. Wait, that's the wrong side. Well, this works. Now we know where it fits. And turn that into a default requester station. Uh, that was the wrong one to get rid of. Request threshold, 100k. Negative 273. Refresh it when it gets down to 20k. And then... Uh, where are we going to pump it in? That's looking a little bit inconvenient. It's all looking a little bit inconvenient right now. This will have to do. Uh, not the absolute tidiest bit of piping ever, but under the circumstances, I can live with that. We also need to get it over here, and over here, and over here. That's looking like more of a problem up the top end. Oh. Uh... Hmm. How do we get this fluid over here? We could do weaving of underground pipes and underground belts, I guess. I don't love needing to do this. In fact, it might be a problem. A 
if this goes here, that goes there. It, I, I kind of expected this. It's one tile short. That is tragic to say the least. I could have moved this over a tile if that did reach. What? Oh, autosave. Hmm. It's looking very difficult to get our input fluid up this way. I could, I could do it up here. That's looking like the way to go, honestly. No, I can't get through here. Uh, okay. Down this end is also looking like a challenge. I wonder if turning the machines around and swapping the pipe directions would help a lot. This part would just connect here directly. That's a good start. Hello spiders. That's a little distracting, not gonna lie. If the... okay, if this is the output fluid we need to bring this to here, regardless. Underground belts on bottom could allow the pipes to fit? Um, possibly. We need to link this to this either way. So, that's the first thing we're looking at. Yeah, I think we can just barely get across this, but then that's a problem. Um, underground belts and underground pipes have the same length. Oh, what's our output? Dark and uh, dark energy data, blank and junk. Uh, hmm. We're going to have to share blank and junk on this output belt. Is that going to be okay? How many machines have we got? 128. 28. 38 plus 9. That's a little bit more than 45. There's no wide middle splitter there, unlike the top. Wide middle splitter. As in this thing? Yeah. Uh, I, c I think I've done this before in a different build, actually. I can easily make this use um, two belts of throughput. But then... I had to solve this problem before. Where is it? Um, is this it? I found that surprisingly quickly. Why are our broken data cards not being picked up? And... And why... How are these inserters sticking out? Uh, stack size 180 should be sufficient for the precise balance loader. Please drop those. So we've got... Yeah, we had to split which is on which side of the belt up here to make room for it. Um, I still think this is the way to go. But I need to fix that. Why, why is this all off by one? How can it be? Oh, okay, there we go. Can I just... 
Get rid of the stations. These circuits are going to be the same. That should all be pretty much the same. Okay, let's get rid of these belts here. Okay, so our final product is dark energy data. And that goes to this belt. Everything else, which is blank and junk, goes here. With junk data on a specific side of the belt. Two belts of throughput. Oh. Wait. Surely not. No, these are filtered. We've got 1.9k broken data cards in all of these. It looks like it should be working. 24 chests. Red wires are connected. Also, why are we not picking up the broken data cards? Don't tell me I don't actually have a drop-off. I don't actually have a request somewhere for broken data cards. How many things make broken data cards? Uh, ten. Including deep space science. Okay, let's start from the beginning. Uh, gravitational and lensing makes dark matter data. Junk and broken. Is that the thing I was just looking at? Dark matter? Yeah, it is. Uh, junk data card, cool thermofluid, sometimes gives us broken. That is, I believe, integrated into this build. And my fear is that this is the only place we're dealing with broken data cards right now. And I forgot about that. Uh, data formatting, deep space science, and deep data formatting, time space anomaly data. I'm pretty sure I haven't done that before. Naquium cubes. Okay. So this build here is actually the first time that we've had broken data card that has been an output to the rail network. And I sort of kind of forgot that I don't have a place to drop those off. My bad. Uh, we could squeeze that in here pretty easily, actually. I think. Can we rotate that properly, please? Oh, there we go. Okay, let's get our construction spiders over there. Without crossing any of our spaceships, preferably. I don't know if the only reason this thing broke was because this thing got completely full. Like, if the loader part got broke because this got completely full of broken data cards. I don't think that should happen. Uh, each greater than zero output each. Remove these signals with negative a million. Read from the logistic train stop output. Nearly said trash. Uh, subtract what is already in the train with read train contents. This is our total for how much stuff and of which type we're still trying to put into the train. It goes to these three combinators, each divided by 24 output each for the signal type and S for the stack size. Uh, well, there's your problem. 
at least one insider here. Yeah, it's the same across all of these. I missed setting one of these inserters to have set filters and set stack size. And then presumably I copied it across like this. Cool. Oh, that was surprisingly easy to fix. Uh, these need to be... Set filters. Actually, I'm just going to copy all of this. Because we need filters here. Make a separate block for that? I might. For now, I'll just do this little stop gap. There's only one place. Like, I, w I want to replace this build sooner or later. Because the ratios are going to get a bit messed up, I think, when we keep upgrading this. And or the belt throughput. We're already at 72 blank data cards. We're probably not going to hit 90. Alright, let's do a... Request a station. Spiders, you are making this difficult. And what about there? We're going to request broken data cards. Uh what's um what's the stack size on these? 50, unsurprising. 7 times 160 times 50, 56,000. I don't care if a train tries to overfill this and has to wait for it to unload. Highest priority is to get rid of these. So we're asking for 7 train loads. Data card. Add some chests. I won't be too surprised if this will be sufficient uh, throughout the whole game. Ooh, I could move this up a little bit. Yeah, I, I think I will do that. And that way we should be able to... ...fit this train here without blocking this one. Cool. Also, this signal should absolutely be here. Otherwise, the train being here is blocking this section of the roundabout. Okay, so filter inserters, what's our rate that we can consume this stuff? Probably pretty quick. Uh, only 20 per second? Huh. How fast are we making broken? 17 per second. Wow. Okay. How fast are these builds at making broken data cards? 19 per second? Okay, so this is going to be way not enough for the moment. But it'll at least be functional. Uh, where did our spiders go? Here they are. Broken data and that's why you need a, a new block yeah but first I need things working um, and this is pr a pretty easy way to make that happen um, balanced unloaders
I'm just gonna... Not that one. Can I borrow some of this? Cool. And I'll just put one belt through here. For now. Well, I could make it 90. I have to merge it in like here and here and the blank the blank data cards are gonna block it and Actually the blank data cards are not gonna block it at all. Okay, let's do ninety. Uh right ninety per second. Let's remove that. So I want... that's going to be a little bit awkward to merge this in here. Not that awkward, actually. That's actually a really good fit. Constant Combinator might have to move. The aesthetic. Uh, and we should have a splitter somewhere. Connect this. Make sure all of those are connected. Uh, did we not switch this on yet? I wouldn't have minded if a train came early, actually. There it goes. Fantastic. Okay. That'll at least work. Um, although, if everything's going max rate, it'll obviously be terribly insufficient. Now then, uh, this should already be set up correctly, except we're going to be offering... Wait, what? Oh, this thing doesn't do broken. Yeah, no, that's fine. So this one... Junk data card and broken data card. This one is junk and blank. Cool, cool, cool. Blank data card and junk data card. Fantastic. Well, on max, your UPS will be probably three. True. That's why we're not worrying about it until we get there. Um, okay, so now the piping. This part is going to be a challenge. Although that part at least fits pretty conveniently. And this needs to go here. And that's actually pretty straightforward. That was surprisingly easy. Okay, so input or output um, fluid is going to be connected like so. Uh, we're probably going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Don't need that pipe there. Was that copied from over here? It was not. I wonder where we got that pipe from. 
Okay, so we're going to copy this much. Should be exactly the same layout. Fantastic. Cool, cool, cool. And now we need to connect the other sets of pipes. And which one is going to be input or output is almost academic. But I think. I would like one, two, three, four. Yeah, this, this is right in the middle, and we don't need so much throughput that we really need a pump. So I think I would like to make the. It, it'll be physical output is where the fluid input is, and vice versa. If we go with that. So output is output is all connected once we get this over here, which is going to be a challenge. No, it's not. That's actually really easy at this point. Um, we can't do a 15. This needs to be an underground. We need 10 tiles. No. Okay. That's all of those pipes connected. And we're going to make that the output, I think. Also, those pumps need to be turned around. No, wait, these pumps need... No, those pumps need to be turned around. Why do I struggle with this sometimes? Wait, no, that was right. I'm so confused. 25 degree... Negative 275 uh, comes in here. So it's coming from the train. And this is going to the train. That makes sense, because I copied the negative 275 input from somewhere else. Oh, I think we're ready to switch that one on. I need to turn all of these machines around. Oh. Well. That one's going to have to... Yeah. Only one of these was going to have that convenient connection. Alright, so these are all connected already. Can we squeeze this through here? If we do an underground... No. The belt could go around like that. We could have the pipe go this way. Or I could put this here. That's actually pretty good. It's as good as it's going to get anyway. And this is the exact same little squiggly thing that we were looking at having to put over here before. Uh, just for the sake of symmetry, symmetry-ish, that's going to go over there. And then this is already set up. 25 degree thermo fluid, I believe it was. 25, yes, good. Fantastic. Uh, I don't really mind if these two blocks have to share the train blocks, that is, because it takes a second to
to pick up or drop off fluid. Okay. Um, can we fix all of this stuff? I think I got rid of some of my robocords. No, we've got eight. Oh, I've run out of pipe. Where's our construction spiders? Back, you come. Oh, did we get them some modules? I believe so. I don't see them. It's probably fine. Can't wait to see this thing working. Indeed. Alright, so we've got... I think we're ready to turn this on. We need negative pressure data as well as Astro. Yeah, I think we're ready to turn on our input stations. Let's go one, and a two, and a three, whoops, and a three. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Turn these around quick as we can. Let's double check these. I need to get in range of all of them. So new, negative 275 is on the outsides and the middle. Uh, and I didn't actually connect... Uh-oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> We're doing it live. Um... Let me just put these... Actually, let me do it this way. Get rid of everything except for the gravimetrics facilities. Why is this... oh. Okay. So, negative 275. That looks correct. We just need this pipe to go here. Uh, please don't tell me I ended up summoning the train when I may not have a solution for this. I think I see one. Worst case, we go through here. So now the only question is, can we make it look better? I can't believe we're still not getting our research done. What have we got here? Uh-oh. We've got... hang on, what? We appear to have 2,000... Science 4s? Products finished, 409 times 8. Uh, 3,272? Energy Science Pack 4. Energy Science Pack 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, we've got at least 2,000. As hard to look at as those are. So, where have they gone? Don't tell me they're here and I haven't... Um, They are. <laughs> I forgot the final step. Okay. Alright. Or what, just one of many steps, I guess. 
we need to request tier 4 of each of these. And I would prefer it if we can do all of these in sync, actually. So that's going to go there. And... Do we have four of each? Yes. Fantastic. Unfortunately, we can't set the requests for things that we haven't researched yet. So I couldn't have done this ahead of time. I have to keep remembering to do this. Five more minutes until Christmas 2023. Are we about done with the playthrough? Yeah, what Veldek said. Okay, that'll be Dynamic Emitter and Shield Projector complete, and most of Material Fabricator. Fantastic. Chat plays SEK2 is up to Bio3, Astro3, Mat2, Energy2. That sounds like a slow process. Maholic, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, where are we going? We need to connect this to this. That might be a challenge. I think I'm just going to have to run pipe through in spots like this. Now I suddenly don't feel bad that I dropped out before I really got into space science in my K2 plus SE. Yeah. Okay. I think we have to. It's going to look a little budge, but I think we actually sort of have to run this pipe. Actually, I'll do it where we've already got this underground belt. And this one can go here. Um, and then this one. Did I connect these two? No. No, I did not. Not yet. So we're going to have to do this going both ways. At least we can do a consistent look with this. Oh. But mostly con consistent look. Okay. How are we linking you? 15, 13. That's not what I want to hear. Wait, no, it should be an even number. 12. We could do four threes. We could do five and seven. Ugh. I guess we'll do a five and seven. And then... This needs to go through here. This needs to go here. And this needs to go here. 
So I think that is our input fluid. What's better about the lung pipes versus the normal ones? Uh, the lung pipes count as a single container, which effectively... Okay, so the way pumping fluid through pipes works in Factorio, uh, it takes much more pressure to pump fluid through here than it does through here. Uh, so, because this pipe actually counts as just one pipe, uh, these are effectively the same in terms of fluid dynamics. Uh, it's also better for UPS um, simulating the fluids, but fluids are nowhere near as much of a problem as they used to be. Uh, so you'll get better throughput with this than uh, with this. Thank you, no worries. Sleepy Duff. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. It seems all of our input fluids are done. Output fluid. Uh, I'm pretty sure we've connected all of these already. In a big S shape. And we just need to get, uh, get that. Oh, we've already done it. Okay, I think we're done here. Uh, so what resource is are we missing? Negative data. Negative pressure data. Is it broken or is it just slow? We haven't touched this for a long time, so I think it's probably broken. We're missing. Aeroframe scaffold? Really? That doesn't feel right. Um, how are we getting Aeroframe scaffold into orbit? Did we do... I don't think we did a shuttle for it yet. No, that's all of our shuttles. This should show us testing pack. And this is what? This is not used yet. Uh, Aeroframe scaffold. We are producing those. We're using them here. I thought we were producing them here. We've got none on Nalvis either. This is pretty alarming. Uh, where do we make Aeroframe Scaffolds again? I don't think this is helping. Um, I actually don't remember. Good grief. Aeroframe scaffold. Bonk. Uh, Versa, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Where, oh, where can my aeroframe scaffold be? We do make them on the ground, right? I'm pretty sure. Well. Yeah, we're using them on the ground. Uh, am I blind? Surely I didn't deconstruct it. I don't think that's likely. We made bearings over here and I almost forgot about them. boop a doop Shield projector is being researched. Very cool. What did we unlock? Dynamic emitter. It's just another intermediate product. Made in a space manufacturing. Okay. 
Uh, why don't we get the mall to build some of those? For later. What do they cost? One and one. Oh, that was quick. That's nice and quick. Okay. Can we find our aeroframe scaffold? Oh, they're here. There, there you are. Okay. Uh, so why are we not making more of you? There's no aeroframe poles. Uh, well, the way we've laid this out, instead of splitting the aeroframe poles between scaffold and the rail network, we're just saturating, we're pretty much just saturating the rail network. But why are aeroframe poles being consumed so quickly all of a sudden? I wonder where they're going. We are sending them into orbit. I don't think we have a shuttle for that yet. Uh, aeroframe poles. I can't remember where we would be sending all of these. But the solution is fairly obvious. Um, I might... It might be difficult. Actually, how about this? It may or may not be easier to copy what we did with the, the update to the cable production to send aeroframe poles over to scaffolding. Come to think of it, I want to... I, I, I want to upgrade this build, just like we did with the Holmium stuff, so that we're using beacons. I might... Hmm, how, how close is this to what we're doing over here? It is mostly a perfect fit. I had to move all of that over one tile, and some of these machines and a couple of the belts aren't the same. And that's it. Let's get our construction spiders to pay that a visit. I completely forgot as well I was going to do scaffolding and uh, the next one up from scaffolding in this block. I'll just leave myself a little reminder. What is this? Oh, oh, I know what this is. This is a crafting combinator blueprint setting that got left behind. To fix that, all we have to do is put a ghost and then remove it. And then, voila! the imaginary crafting combinator or its settings that it left behind is gone. Good evening all. Hey, here's Mike. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Noob question. I've just launched my first two satellites and now can't, uh, can see Nalva's orbit, which has some stuff already there. What are good priorities now? I have media slash CME defense. What are good priorities now? Probably getting an automated supply of whatever you can into orbit so it's easy to build there. Although, if I were to do another playthrough and space elevators still don't exist, 
um, I would actually set up my base of operations, my, my orbital base, um, somewhere like maybe Rampart, um, or Soma perhaps, around a small moon so that it costs very little rocket fuel to take off from the planet below. Um, so what are we doing over here? I think I will turn these belts around. And once this output has stopped... Oh, I forgot the Holmium cable requires plastic. So we needed a whole other station for that. It'll be easy to remove that addition, though. Okay. I also want... Are we still going with the sticks? Okay, we've stopped. We're going to have to pick all of this stuff up anyway. It's just a few more aeroframe scaffolds we'll be picking up. If I don't wait a few seconds. Uh, we need to remove all of the tier 1 beacons. And actually, before I do this... Let me just get rid of the stations that we're overriding. I'll also get rid of the plastic stuff. And... uh-oh. Didn't realize that would be in a bot network. Oh. oh, is this plastic as well? Yeah, it is. So that means I need to get rid of this part. Get rid of the train stops. Don't want to override those. And I think we're just about good here. So I'm going to cut all of that. Why do we have crafting combinator settings here again? this on top. I need to move all of these over. I'm just gonna delete that for the moment. Uh, some of these belts are gonna be wrong as well. I'll just do this to make sure they're not going to be in the way. And these ones. Okay. How close are we getting to just copy pasting and changing the recipes? I think that's it. Oh, the Aurelium spill. I wonder how that just happened. So somehow all of this Beryllium plate just got moved over here. That was interesting. 
Okay, so this recipe is a million plate. What was wrong with that? Nothing weird happened. It's fine. Chest poison? He owes chest explosion, right. Yeah, but the it wasn't a chest, it was the um belt contents over here. Oddly enough. I would make sure to build a sturdy supply of basic materials, indeed. Yeah, do do the extra work to make things easier for yourself later. Absolutely. As much as you want to get up there and just start playing with things. Uh, these two stations are going... Here, actually. We're not going to rotate that. This should be beryllium ingot. And this is... I actually missed copying that part. Uh, this is... Wait, what? Oh, it's a pickup station. No, that's that's totally fine. Okay, cool. I really made the aeroframe scaffold icon hard to find over here. So why don't we just put that there? And then... This should be sticks. Ooh, we have shield projector. Heavy composite. I don't know if I've made any of those. Uh, aeroframe pole. How fast is this? 99, just like the wire. So we need 37 beryllium plate input. We've got two belts here, which is a bit unnecessary. But that's fine. And this one should be scaffold. We should see plate coming in here and here. How much plate do we need? 22 plate per second, that's half a belt, one belt of aeroframe poles, and we've got two belts of aeroframe poles, and it is 50-50 going over to our aeroframe scaffolds. Fantastic. Recipe. And then turn this. Oh, this is already correct. We just don't have any more beryllium ingots uh, delivered here yet. Okay, why don't we have any beryllium ingots delivered yet? Also, this should be connected here. As should this. Cool. In the new attempt, I may want to make sure I don't have to go back for stuff like this. That was my mistake in the first try. I went to space too fast and could not support it, and had to go back very often to set up new mining fields. Yeah, but space. You gotta play in space. Uh, where are our ingots? Beryllium ingot. I thought we were ahead on these. 24k. And what are you looking for? Copper. 
23k, 26k, 23k. What does it stack to? 100. So I think we need like. I don't think I need to set that as high as 400. Probably. If two trains come for the same resource at the same time, with the way this is set up, we could end up with a train load plus 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, oh, sorry, 14, 16, 32 stacks. Um, 192 stacks. Yeah, no, the 400 stacks is actually pretty sensible. Um, but why are we not keeping up with the really... Uh-oh. What seems to be the problem here? Why? How? What? No. But also... Okay, we have barrel. Uh... Water. Wait, what? We are net positive on water. Oh. So I set this up so that um, we would take water away. I didn't set a high priority on the water. So this is instead of... Um, Having a uh, I need to just delete some of it How about this. There we go. We need a little bit of water to get started. Oh, or do we? That turns solids into water. And this thing consumes water. I guess we didn't need water delivered here. Yeah, that was a bit of an oversight. So step one is the same as ever. Step two, crushed barrel plus sulfuric acid outputs a little bit of water. Probably not enough. We need 150 water to get one of these started. So it wasn't the worst idea to have it delivered. Um, however, the conclusion I came to here is, okay, we're very slightly net positive on water. So what I'm going to do is have a water station as both drop-off and pick-up. And we're going to aim for just the bare minimum. The smallest amount that we're asking for water that would trigger a delivery. So we have to be completely empty of water here before a train will drop it off. And it also acts as a provider of water if we get to 120k. Um, but I forgot to put a massive provide priority on the water. To make sure it would get taken away. I also haven't seen trains picking up water for a long time. I may have actually forgotten or not realized that all of our stations that consume water, that have trains deliver it, I actually ended up pumping water in just to make it go faster. So not the worst idea. I won't say in a vacuum, that's not quite right. Um. But I kind of overlooked something. Well, that'll get our... Uh, what is it called again? Beryllium powder flowing? Yeah, we've been... We've been going a bit slow for a while. For quite a while. I know solution for everything, just delete offending resource, <laughs> indeed.
I might forgive you for deleting stone, but I'll never forget. <laughs> okay. Um, I am also going to go back to Nalvis so that I can deliver these um, energy beam receivers. And we've got a... Excuse me, we've got another whole station just waiting. Oh wow, what? Is this broken or do we just have that much power? We just have that much power. Okay. That's good. Let's check. You've got steam. You've got steam. Fantastic. So what's our power looking like right now? 12 out of 24 gigawatts. Fantastic. And now we can turn particle streams plus fusion test data, well, plus a tiny amount of fusion test data, into basically any resource. That's pretty cool. Material fabricator. You know I am going to go ham on these. What does it actually take to get particle stream? Let's think about this. Plasma stream is stone and chemical gel. Chemical gel is cosmic water petroleum. Cosmic water is just lubricant, a tiny amount of lubricant plus water. So a decent amount of oil, a tiny amount of stone, a little bit of sand, which is another tiny amount of stone, Material testing pack, which is a bunch of stuff. Iron, copper, plastic, stone. So, small amount... I forgot how cheap material testing packs are. That's actually not much. One iron, one copper, one plastic, one stone, two stone. Ignoring the productivity bonuses. Uh, three or four stone. Some oil... Uh, 10 chemical gel, which is 100 petroleum and one lubricant, I think. Why is the chemical gel? Why is chemical gel under another... thing somewhere? Anyway... Uh, 200 particle stream. That's actually not as big a deal as I thought. 50 particle stream becomes only one barrel. Ouch. 10 copper, one cryonite, 15 contaminated scrap. Interesting choice. Holmanite. Iridite. So we're still heavily incentivized um, to collect these resources from other places, the exotics in particular. Uh, but if we've got... We can't exactly turn one resource that we've got an extreme amount of into another resource. It's... A com it's all of our basic resources. So this will be a great place to... This will be a great place to send resources as a second last resort, instead of sending them here. Anything that goes into making testing packs... Um, well, okay, long story short, anything that goes into making particle stream. Um, the second last place that we send it instead of here, is going to be to make Particle Stream to turn into whatever else we might need. Take care, I am freaky. Uh... Go 
same. Okay. Distractions, though. Uh, let's get in our ship. Let's take our spider with us. Let's go to... Whoops. Um, I might actually land this thing next to the mole. It's so small, actually. Um, we can probably fit it inside of the mole easily. Yeah, that's another little bonus. Are there more doors or wheels on this planet? Doors or wheels? I mean IRL on Earth. Uh... Probably wheels, especially depending on how you define them. Like... What if every little bearing in a machine you define as a wheel? I didn't realize I had to press engage. Yeah, I think the accumulator is more than enough um, to get to Nalvis from Nalvis orbit or vice versa. We're literally going to shoot down one asteroid, if that. If I set the speed low enough, do we just never even see asteroids? Anchor on Nalvis. Confirm anchor. This might be my new favorite way to get in and out of Nalvis. Uh, let's take our energy beam receiver. Whoops. Up here. And I'll just steal the rest of them real quick. Receiver. All of them, please. And why not take the modules? And I'll drop off the uh, front modules I'm carrying as well. What doors count? Kid car toys have wheels, but doors might not be functioning to open. But is drawn door still door? A drawn door? As in like a fake door? A car's wheel door neutral. <laughs> Indeed. Your average car has, what, four doors? Four wheels, or lots and lots of wheels, depending on how you count them. But what if you start defining, like, the glove box as having a door? Let's head back. And let's go to Paladus and set our target. Uh, I don't like that actually. We've got the one on the left going to the one on the right and vice versa. How about this? Very, very good. How's our heat looking? 50, 60 degrees already. Fantastic. And this thing is, of course, maxed out. Oh, I... I kind of like the way the steam looks around this thing as well. And we get to see all the heat, uh, heat pipes. Okay. 
So that should cover our power needs for quite a while to come. Uh, even during the night, perhaps. Oh, the nuclear power is still running. Yeah, if we can get to the point where the nuclear power doesn't run during the night, I'll be quite satisfied with that. It's probably just one or two more of these. Three at the most. Mm, let's say four at the most, looking at the size of those reactors, even if they're nowhere near as space efficient. Uh, I'm guessing it's technically incorrect to call this thing a reactor, but it feels right. Alright, I will drop off prod modules as well. And I'll drop off the... Wait, no, we're not going to be beaming energy from here. That's absurd. Okay. Come with me, spider. Actually, until I have a reason to go back to Nalvis Orbit, I might just sit here. That energy production looks awesome. Thank you. I'm quite happy with it. I mean, obviously with the rectangular shape of the steam turbines, um, fitting them together like this is a bit awkward, but I don't think I could have done much better. Very nice. I love the glow of the heat pipes as well. It's going to be a minute before these ones start producing power. Of course. That super clean setup for sure, thank you. Alright, back to orbit. Uh, did we finish this build? Products finished, zero. We're missing negative pressure data. Negative pressure data had problems. Oh, that's right. We're not getting enough aeroframe scaffolding. That's what sent us back to Nalvis. Um, we should be doing a bit better now, though. Oh, we're actually full on aeroframe poles now? Uh, at least on this side. Uh, is this 2.4 per second? Can the inserter keep up? I don't think it can. If it gets to 4, it pr probably can't keep up. It just got to 5. Alright, upgrade planner. And upgrade planner. And maybe these should be... Maybe these should be a priority for productivity bonuses now. I don't know, we've never had a problem with beryllium plate. Is it just throughput? Where are we getting... Where's the old build that's giving us beryllium ingots? Probably looks a lot like this. Here it is. How fast are you? 10.752 per second. Your input is saturated. Uh, it probably helps that I unstuck the beryllium powder production though. And it just needs to go to the omni smelters. I should finish prod sixing this stuff, actually. I'm gonna go and uh, grab myself a handcrafted 
uh, electric boiler over here. And we're just going to delete... We're going to delete water if we get above a certain amount. Oh, and I could have taken the prods with me since I'm going personally as well. But I want to leave a bunch of them behind. Or there's probably somewhere I should prioritize for the rest of the prod modules as well. I don't think uranium is nearly as much of a problem anymore. We're basically phasing out most of our use of it. Uh, oil would be a good idea. How many more do we need? 147 uh, for this block. That seems like a good idea. Uh, if it comes down to it again, I would definitely like to productivity bonus our rocket, solid rocket fuel block. Although I'm guessing at this point we are somewhat catching up. Yeah, light oil hasn't crashed and we've completely saturated uh, two train stations. 14.4 trains full of solid rocket fuel here. So I don't think we're having that problem for a while now. Uh, give to me the prods for now, thank you. And... I haven't marked these ones for upgrade yet, because Iridium has not been a problem for a long time. It really has not been a problem for a long time. Holmanite, on the other hand, was a problem. But I've already upgraded this one. Fantastic. Very happy to see this thing saturated and working all the time now. It took such a long time to make it happen. Very, very cool. I like the shape of this block. And then... Where are we going? How many prods do we have left? Almost 200. Did I finish upgrading... Vanilla core fragments? I did not. 104? How many was this? 147. Uh... Hmm, choices. I was gonna say we haven't had problems with iron or copper or anything like that for a long time. Oh. But we did have to tap a copper mine recently. Um, well, I actually tapped three copper mines. What the... Uh, there we go. That was surprisingly easy to fix. Well, considering those mines haven't been in motion this whole time, because of the one or two bits of rock stone when we deconstructed uh, uh, rock. I think that's how it gets on the belt. Um, considering this mine hasn't been in motion this whole time, and we've been doing okay with copper, I think that state of affairs is going to last for a while. But even so, I think I would like to reduce the number of blocks that I need to do oil stuff for UPS reasons. 
but I think it's still a higher priority to... Uh, let's not go through the spaceships. I think it's still a high priority to get more out of our vanilla core fragments. What's your current all-time barrel production? Let's see. Barrelium. All-time 19 million fragments. Uh, 18 million powder. I don't think I've tapped a barrel mine directly yet. I set up my... I set up a mine in an asteroid belt and was wondering if it will last forever. Uh, well, no, it won't last forever. Um, oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 18 million beryllium powder so far. 12 million plate. A hundred million. Nice. Yeah, I'm definitely going to be tapping those. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be tapping those for the end game. How fast can we go question? Although I would, I would like to see how much we can squeeze out of just core fragments before that. Do you ship all the raw core fragments to Nalvis or do you process them and then ship? I ship them all to Nalvis. Um, I actually started out, I think Tolibai was our first outpost to get uh, core fragments from, and I started out processing them on the spot, and then just the sheer amount of stuff that we had to build around here and get rid of all of these different resources to keep the whole thing flowing, uh, not so great. You could do that, or you could just send back um, uranium core fragments, which are going to be a lot more stack efficient, especially after productivity bonuses. Alright, there's our prod sixes. Fantastic. And how fast is this now? Uh, 163 core fragments per second in, two belts of copper out, almost two belts of stone, coal, copper. Did I say copper up here? I meant iron. Uh, 31 vulcanite per second, 0.8 uranium per second. And we are actually keeping it fed. This one had its output blocked for just a second. That was surprising. I think I saw this one dark as well. So realistically, it's going to be just a little bit slower than that. Um, why are we not... Oh, did we just run out? Oh, I didn't, uh, I didn't balance this. And the belt lengths are different. I would have thought I would have caught this when I was testing it. looking okay actually there's core fragments on the belt uh, effectively at all times but the inserter was struggling to pick them up here it's always at the end of the belt hmm I have mine connected to stations and that act just like mining stations, but get preferred because they are usually closer than mines. A sheep say meh? 
Uh, also Dardanum, Forsterst, Midden, if I didn't say already. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And uh, Mine Mousecraft, good to see you again. Sometimes I get more caught up in what people are saying. Just turning spare copper and iron into landfill, but I, but I am fairly early game. Yeah, I mean, you will eventually run out of storage for the landfill. Um, I quite like this sushi belt. Very happy with this one. I want to replace all the old, well, both of the old uh, core fragment processing areas with this new build sooner or later. Alright, let's head back to... I've still got 38 prod modules. What should I prioritize? I think we've got... We've still got tier 3s for Cryonite. I'm really not worried about Cryonite. Um, to the point where I haven't bothered increasing the throughput from the source. Well, I have a little bit. This is pretty pitiful compared to some of our other outposts. But Cryonite is not difficult to have enough of. Um, uranium... We're really not struggling with that. I've actually already got Prod 6s there. Um, Beryl is Prod 6 uh, even Iridite is prod 6 Vulcanite is, of course, prod 6 Uh, we've got prod 6 Vitamelange, prod 6 Coal. I forgot I'd done all of these. We've got tier 3 prods for Vitamelange, but considering... Considering the core fragment output from Vitamelange is saturated, I'm not going to worry about that anytime soon. This, this is it. This is where we want productivity bonuses right now. I've got it set as a lower priority um, than this block, which is full of prod sixes. But it does overflow into here sometimes. We are prob... Excuse me. Uh, we're probably... I was going to say we're probably net positive on Vulcanite blocks at this point, but judging by the amounts in the storage here, that would be a no. Or if we are net positive on it, it's just taking a long time to catch up and saturate everything. Vulcanite block, last hour. We made 15k, we consumed 14k. Okay. What? Why does searching for block give us rail signals? I guess it's because it's in the description. That's fine. Yeah, we should be trending upwards with Vulcanite blocks. I don't know how this thing got so imbalanced. Oh. Because, yeah, I was trying, I was trying an experiment here. All of these uh, inserters are set to no condition but we set the stack size based on beryllium powder, and we get the average... Um, without this constant combinator here, if we're at average or below, it would be zero or negative. And if we're above average... Wait, that doesn't make sense. I think I did this wrong. Oh, this has a stack size of 12. Okay. No, I think it is working. Wait, what? This one has a stack size of 12. It's got 1.4k. This one has 2.8k, stack size 12. What's the average? Uh, 1.2k. So 
so yeah I was right I, I did this the wrong way around so the idea was if we are behind the average our stack size increases and we're, if we're ahead of the average it drops down I've actually done the exact opposite of that I don't know if I can pull off the trick with as few combinators though Probably the good old fuzzy search. Yeah. Oh, is that an option I have enabled? Possibly. Can you show that tiny little spaceship again? Curious how it all fits together so tiny. Sure. It is a rocket engine, some pipe, because we can't connect this directly to the rocket engine unless it's off center. Um. An accumulator is our only source of power. It's only going between Nalvis and Nalvis orbit. We have a laser turret uh, console, of course, and a couple of chests uses up about the same stress as the hull stress. Um, constant combinator is going to have an anchor signal. Oh, that's right. And then that's it. We have some tiny power poles. I, I could use a couple of medium power poles here, I guess. How much fuel does that require to take off from Nalvis? Uh, 62 gigajoules. And... With 98k, we have 196 gigajoules. Uh, so max, it, it can hold 200 gigajoules. It takes 62 to take off from a planet of radius 5,692. So it can take off three times um, with just the one tank. It's pretty good, I think. Should have built this sooner. I could have built this as soon as I had access to spaceships. Um, but at the time, I didn't think of liquid rocket fuel as being in any way scarce. Uh, did we drop off all of our prods? It looks like we did. Which one's got the prods? I don't see any of them. Oh, here we go arbitrary directions. Alright, back to the mole. I quite like that I can land this ship in our mole so I don't have to think about where it is. That's cool. And we are at functionally max temperature. Cool. So now we can make 26 gigawatts. What happens if you run out of fuel for your spaceship in space? Uh, for some reason, it is still able to move extremely slowly. Uh, I believe the speed is like literally 0 0.3, um, as opposed to this one is currently going 90. It's going to take 46 seconds to get to Nalvis orbit. Uh, we actually had that problem. I accidentally sent a couple of uh, shuttles, like these little things, that are only supposed to go to Nalvis orbit. Uh, I actually accidentally sent a couple of those way out this way, and by the time I noticed and they were completely out of fuel and turned them around, uh, they actually took something like 12 hours to get back to Nalvis. And they were carrying sand. Uh, how much sand was it? Let's see. Sand. Uh, I think it's 16 chests, isn't it? So 16 times 200 times 48. 
153,600. Yeah, it was over 300,000 sand that I accidentally sent on a tour around the solar system. Would be bad if your engineer is on board, indeed. I would definitely mount a rescue mission in that instance. Cool. Alright, uh, what are we doing next? We were waiting on a... Ooh, worker robot speed is going faster than expected. Very cool. Uh, perhaps it is time to design some new spaceships? Bonus points if I can fit them in the same space as we've already got for our space trucks. Um, because if I make them a different shape, I need to go, I need to go to three different outposts and change the, well, I, I can probably change them remotely. It'd still be a little bit of a pain. Um, and we also can't make them too big because they need to be able to take off. But I wonder if I could... I wonder if... Where's our spaceship stuff? Here we go. Oh, that is big. It's 4x4? Four four? Really? That is... That is very big. How much energy does it consume? I need to make some of these. Uh, let's go with spaceship things. Shield projector. Let's make sure we have like 50. We've run out of Holmium cable up here. Wait, Holmium cable should be doing just fine at this point. Holmium cable. Uh, we are refueled. We're just waiting on a little bit more Holmium cable. Which is being produced very quickly. That's good. Uh, and considering that I think both of these shuttles were almost ready to launch. Okay, this one's a little bit further behind. But 16 chests full is not a trivial amount. Do you have the shield projectors? Indeed. What do we need? Heavy composite. Have I ever made heavy composite? I don't even remember. That's how big this playthrough is getting. We have not made heavy composite. Can we make it on the ground? Yes, I think. It's pretty straightforward. Three inputs, three seconds. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to take a short break. And after that, I think we'll make some heavy composite. Back shortly.
Okay. Let's continue, shall we? Um, where were we? Heavy composite. Uh, I'll get to you eventually, scaffolding. Where are our spiders? About where you would expect to find them. Send them back till they get their inventory sorted out. And I think... What the... What was that bot doing? Hello? You alright there, buddy? Okay. Uh, I don't see any reason not to build heavy composite here. I imagine the throughput for it isn't going to be that crazy later on. So there's only one recipe. Uh, heat shield, girder, iridium plate. 4 to 4 to 2. So we'll have one or two belts come... Well, we'll definitely need two belts coming in for that. Um, if we're going to belt it. It's in shield projector. It is in... Material Science Pack 4, albeit not a whole lot of it. It is in Energy Shield Mark 4, High Temperature Heat Exchanger. Uh, if we ever want to go... I think, like, by the time... Uh, by the time I can mass produce the, these belts, I feel like I'm going to be almost done. Um, but they are pretty high throughput if we want to make those belts. And heavy assembly, okay. Are there already heavy composite, or what did the train pass? Uh, heavy comp, I'm pretty sure I just checked, we haven't made any of these. The, we've got bearings, oh, we've got something that's a green version of heavy composite. It's called Aeroframe Bulkhead. We need that for making spaceships. And now that I think about it... Now that I think about it... 1 to 1 to 4, 4 seconds. 4 to 4 to 2, 3 seconds. I don't think the same layout is going to help us all that much. My bad, no worries. El Pancho. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Wait, I think I saw you earlier, actually. Either way. Uh, okay, so the first thing we want is... Input rail. We'll need a request a station or two. I think I will use this as a starting point. And we'll probably find we need to change the shape of the belts. Am I actually not carrying... Oh, there we go. Let's bring our spiders back over here. Okay, so the recipe is heavy composite. That work of robot speed upgrade is getting done faster than expected. Uh, plus 65 percent. Very nice. Okay, how many machines do we have here? 120. 
This was clearly before we had tier 6 modules. I don't think we're going to be keeping... Uh, keeping this layout or anything close to it. Minus 80% power consumption. Let's just check. Might plus 20%. Alright, minimum power consumption, please. Although, maybe it's time to stop conserving power so much, since we have this. On the other hand, it's going to be super fast anyway. I obviously can't afford prod sixes everywhere just yet. Um, let's just copy this through here. Probably missing some if I go this fast. Let's find out. Nope. Uh, 400 heat shielding and iridium plate per second, 200 heavy girder. I don't think so. Um, yeah. Let, let's, let's, let's not, actually. That's a little bit much. What can we... I think this is going to be one of... Oh, no, 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 no. I think this is going to be one of those builds that has a bunch of empty space. So we might go a bit more aggressive using more space for the train stops. For the inputs. 4 to 4 to 2 is kind of a tricky ratio. I should just put one of these here, put some prods in it, and then we can copy that everywhere. Heavy composite. How far up does that go? Perfect. Perfect. One, two, three. That's beacon overload. Who knows if we'll end up using anywhere near this much. Uh, 19 heavy... 20 heavy composite per second, 30, 60, and 60 input. Uh, so we would need two belts of input. One, two, three, four, five belts of input to support just one of... Uh, both of these columns, actually. No, just one of these columns. Okay, how many machines does it take before... That's actually exactly half a belt, one belt, one belt. Nine machines. Can we do three belts of input? Let's see. Well, let's start with this. So we need half a belt, one belt, one belt. So basically three belts. The different resources. Um, can we pull that off, I wonder? I don't think so. Oh, this is wrong. I'm used to the short underground belts now. Wait a sec, how much does an individual machine need? Five per second? Okay, I think a stack inserter can 
and all that. And then... Uh, this belt would have to... I think this would have to be an underground. And then we have like a splitter bringing in these two. Where is this going? Oh no, that's right. I'm just gonna use some um, filters so that we can see what would be what. Um, so let's say, because this has the corner, this can be the slow input, which is girders. Thank you for the follow, Twitch Mel, Twitch Malt. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Girder goes here, and the other two are iridium plate. And heat shield. That's a little bit easier to keep track of. And is that pattern going to repeat? What's the problem here? Stack inserter is... oh. It takes up an awful lot of space. I guess we could use bots if we really have to. Or we could... I have a better idea, I think. have one, two, maybe this looks better actually. I think I like that a little bit better. They're clearly separate. Our output is only 1.65 per second. So what if we have long arms for output and we can have the other input? Well, I guess we don't need that to be underground. We can have the other input like so. And then fitting it around the beacon might be a little bit awkward. of these requires 45 per second from two of our inputs and only half a belt for the other. 
I can probably just do fast inserters for this one. And output is only going to be less than half a belt. So I'm thinking something like this. That's pretty good. So if we double this under one beacon, we have... Can you hurry up with that? Yes, thank you. Uh, 180, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 belts of input. I don't think we're going to put a second beacon down here. So, 4 belts, 4 belts, 2 belts is what we need to support this. We're definitely going to move this rail down a bit. Actually, we might keep that one there. This will be a 90 per second output. That'll necessarily have to be heavy girders. Gotta where art thou? And then uh, heat shield or iridium plate goes here. Oh, let's just put in our hundred and eighty second. Actually. Two, three, four, yeah. It's, I, th I think I would rather balance it. So let's bring it all to one side. This thing didn't actually turn out to be sm much smaller than the alternative. And we get fewer inserters to go from the rail. Let's go with this one. Keep the iridium stuff together. Iridium plates. And we want a corner balance arm, I think. Corner balancer. Oh, I still haven't made this blueprint. Let's do it now. So this is our corner lane balancer. But we're definitely not going to need to lane balance if we're going to be consuming the entire four belts. Um, so we're not going to need this. And we can bring all of this in one tile. It goes here. We don't need this part, so that goes here, because of that, this doesn't need to be an underground, which means it doesn't need to stick out. Middle splits to the outside, outside splits to the middle, and that's it. Okay. What was our naming convention back here? 4C? Four, 4 corner lane balancer? And create copy.
select new contents. Fantastic. I'm going to do it in this order. Okay. So, I think this is going to be in the way of the rail, actually. I might make this go to the middle, if I can. Where do I want this rail? Uh, we might have room. We just barely have room. That's pretty good. Okay. And then... If we go to the right with our... It's going to go here. Oh, this is one tile off. Wait, what? How? Oh, this was two off. Okay, we're good. Yep. One off, indeed. Okay, so that is going to be uh, heat shielding. And we might use another corner balancer. We'll have to move all of this down, but there's plenty of room down here. Oh, and our girders. I guess we'll send those to the middle. So, an upside down left. That's pretty convenient. That should be a splitter, actually. And we definitely don't need to lane balance because this thing will consume every last item that comes down the belt. Okay. So, don't need a splitter here, we've already split. makes the most sense to do this this way. Uh, we, again, I don't need that splitter. We already did that. I guess I could move the splitter so this part's a bit more intuitive. It also gives us something to do with that little bit of space there. And this is going... All the way over here. One off. No. No, well, it's just going to have to have one extra tile. Okay. So this goes here. And then... This one, uh, I wonder if like the boomerang splitter would be better here. Order for boomerang. How far can this reach? 
it can just barely cross this thing. That might be the way to go. Wait, what? Was that seven tiles? It was seven tiles. Okay. Uh, I think I broke something. Balanced unloaders, right. There we go. Boomerang goes here. Uh, this is a lane balancer. I haven't made a lane, a not lane balancer version of this. Let's trim it down. And this goes here. This can go straight down here. And we can obviously tighten this up a little bit. And this part. I can make that look a little bit neater. Cool. So the middle goes to the outsides, and the outsides go to the middle. Let's throw that into our balancer book as well. Uh, create copy. Belt balancer. Select new contents. Fantastic. And then... That is a lot neater and tighter, except I made a mistake here. Uh, we need to get one of these output belts down this way, which is going to get look less tacky, either boomeranging it around here and then bringing one belt through here, or Doing a 90. And then moving all those other four to the left. And we could obviously move this up a bit. Oops. How far up can we move it? Say the first one goes here. Second one goes here, I suppose. It's looking pretty good actually. And then these two one off. How about we do this? Okay, so you're gonna go the one... You're gonna go to the one with the splitters. Should I... This one's in the way if I use this one for that, so... We'll have this one go down here, and this one one off.
Very risky. Not too bad. And we've got one, two, three, four, five tiles here. Easy peasy. Oops. That's backwards. So this goes here, this goes here, this goes uh, here actually. And this is in the way. I think it would look slightly better if... If we don't have to underground there. We probably will underground, but we don't have to do it in that spot in particular. Cool. How would our undergrounds look? Wait, what? What do we undo? Oh. I feel like that looks a little bit better. Mm, maybe I should move it back a tile. No, uh, this is fine. Okay. And what's our output? Uh, only... 59 per second, that's actually two belts. Get rid of those inputs. And... Is that right in the middle? Uh, close enough. It actually is in the middle. Perfect. this to go here, actually. Okay. Cool, I think we're almost done. Provide stack threshold. Not sure why that's not 160. Heavy composite. Fantastic. And we haven't gone over the edge. We can easily double this. at a later date, if we so desire. Alright, we're looking for... let's make sure we connect these. Ooh, what did we research? Bot speed? I think we got bot speed. How fast are our bots now? Well, they are faster. What's our bonus? I think we just gained 65% of base speed. But now we're up to six times. Cool. Uh, so we need request a station, and we need heat shield. Uh. Throughput is really high, so let's aim for like four train loads. To try and keep up with it. And then. Uh, 25,600 iridium plate. And 
speak out is. half as much as heat shielding. 16k. Fantastic. Let's make sure our wires are connected. Switch on our combinators. Trains are on the way. I guess, uh, let's make this like six and three trains that can be scheduled. So those are split evenly. I think we're done. Where's the middle of this? That's as close as it gets. Cool, cool, cool. Let's add our little icon so we know what we're looking at on the map. Heavy composite goes here. And we also need to build scaffolding or rebuild scaffolding. And we need to make space platform plating. Uh, but that is about going to wrap it up for today. It's actually been an eight-hour stream. So I think I will head now. I, I do want to see this build working, if we can. Girders are on their way. Heat shielding is on its way. Fantastic. And let me have a look for a stream to raid. Tumbling, why not? Yeah, let's give tumbling a boost today. UPS creeping down to zero, indeed. Jay Brooks, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Here's our heat shielding. And here's our girders. And thank you for the follow, uh, Sam. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Here comes our heat shielding. It will take a little bit to saturate because literally all of these input belts... Well, okay, we're splitting two across four for the girders, but other than that... Every single input belt, these machines will completely consume the inputs. Um, so it's going to be a bit difficult to saturate this thing. Or I guess technically you would expect it to never saturate. Um, until this is backed up. But all of that just for... 60 heavy composite per second. I like how these two inserters are almost in sync, but inverted. Cool. Very nice. Let's uh, drop in on tumbling. Take care, guys. Balancer, but you were not what we needed. Hello, Marchand. Welcome. How you doing? Hey, Tyrannosaurus. Oh, goody. With a raid. Welcome on in. How you doing? Thank you very much. How did the space exploration go? Raid 
Tabrooks, welcome on in. Thank you for the follow. Oh yes, spiders are here. Although the red spiders are up there. If we want to be exactly true to your remote. It's going well, yeah, I've seen that. And Dragon Knight Kitsune, welcome on in. Thank you for the follow. Hope you have a good time with us here. So, we are redesigning for the umpteenth time the Yellow Science because we are running 2.6 thousand and I need 2.7. John Dummy with a follow. Welcome on in, everybody. Soy? Unless it's Bonyon? 